is all about mentality. Mentality. Get my book respect. And it's all about mentality. I will say this once again. When hogs become giraffes, and giraffes become starfish mentality. We talking about a money-making biracial immigrant mentality. We talking about an obese face producer stanky booty boy mentality. We talking about a 41 year old kindergarten braid hair wearing dope dealer blipster mentality. We talking about LeBron James, Cleveland Cavaliers getting swept in game four mentality. We talking about an adulterous husband with peasley hair, open chest, used Cadillac car, salesman suit wearing mentality. We talking about a Beyonce oily booty cheeks with her hobo oil and tea tree oil getting slammed on at the game for mentality. Uh, it's all about mentality. Buy my book, author, creator, publisher, book signing, book opening, possibly see span interviewing mentality. The book is called Respect, and I need for you to go into your pockets and participate in the venture corporate capitalistic society to push my book to the New York Times bestseller mentality. I need you to understand that it's all about mentality. Go to our Patreon for more, and don't bother me. What makes you think that you jabronis actually have the right to tell somebody what to say and what not to say? Are you tired of the same ridiculous corporate back videos trending over original content creators? This is the real Alex Jones as you can see. Pants, poopy pants, poopy, poopy pants. Then join Black Spot TV. Free from the chains of silly censorship and biased algorithms, you can share, explore, and view content by people like you. Black Spot TV. Hmm. Ah. What business are you in? Oh, uh, I make my bread and butter. I'm pushing. What business are you in? Oh, uh, I make my bread and butter. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. What business are you in? Oh, uh, I make my bread and butter. Call the name where you're from. The boy Yuck Mouth from Oakland. What's happening? What's up, Oakland? Wait a minute, doing? wait a minute. Is this the real Yuck Mouth? The real Yuck Mouth. Yuck Get the money. fuck what out of here. Oakland, Hold I'm on. Hold way. on. Nah, you bullshit me. This, this Yuck Mouth. I got five on the Yuck, yuck mouth. mouth. Rap a lot, five. <laughs> rap a lot, Yuck Mouth. Rap a lot. Motherfucking mouth. Man, we're gonna kill all the fucking calls for the stream. We got motherfucking yuck mouth. Fuck everybody yeah, wait, else. Wait, we got yuck mouth and we got the OG from Houston. So we got these are Damn. gonna be our only two callers for Boy, right now. It's gonna be Illuminati watching our black asses because we some regular ass no, niggas. I was posting yuck mouth calling, yuck mouth calling. Man, y'all like the different the kid, man. It took a lot to get through, man. But I appreciate y'all letting me through. Thought so clowns, I'm in the motherfucking building. What's happening? Okay, man, what's good with you, man? Uh, Yuck Mouth, man, um, I seen some of your coverage 
on uh, the whole situation with Drake, and uh, you said something interesting when you was, uh, I believe you was on like live or some on Instagram or something, and then people was kind of like, yeah, you know, Drake pussy, Drake pussy. You was like, nah, man, you know, Drake with the battle shit, so don't get it twisted. You know, he just listening to wow. the old head out of respect, because, you know, uh, Mr. Mentality, Jay Prince, is going to be that advisor. And you said in your career, he's advised you several times. Oh, definitely, man. Uh, Jay Prince is a powerful dude, first of all. So you ain't going to go against his word. If he tell you to cool it, you got to cool it. Period. <laughs> and who can stop a beat? Like, that shit is completely ceased because of Jay Prince. Like, nobody else could have did it but him. You know what I mean? So we a real boss in the South, so you got to respect that. Also, you got to respect that Drake is the don of this shit. He's at the top of the pyramid. That's why everybody coming for him and everybody teaming up. You know what I mean? Niggas gonna team up with the motherfuckers that got beef with you. You know, me being the king of beef, <laughs> I done been through a lot of shit. But say, mm. for instance, when I had the beef with G-Unit, mm. I teamed up. I went and got the niggas from, uh, from a G-Unit that got kicked out of G-Unit. That stopped fuck with them. Bang them smirk. Mm -hmm. Domination. It's the queens mm -hmm. that really knew, you know, what was happening with the You know what I mean? So, niggas gonna team up. Now, Jay got a problem. You know what I mean? Kanye got a problem. You know what I mean? Them, them two was the top niggas in the game. And they just spreading the word to their little niggas. So when I was beefing, 50 couldn't come at me. He spread the word to his little niggas. So game got at me. You dig? Mm. So you, know, you got Pusher getting at him. Now you got Meek Mill. You know what I mean? The little boys. You know what I mean? The Jay throwing the subliminals. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, man, they all coming at Drake here because he on top. Mm. Flat out. Oh, yeah. I and got yeah, you. I got it. But then, look, you got to address the motherfucking elephant in the room, though. Okay. Without Kanye, it wouldn't be no motherfucking threat. Let's be real, my nigga. That 808 and Heartbeats, that nigga Drake mastered that style, that content, and ran with it. Mm. And ain't look back, nigga. And be outdo Kanye with his own shit. That's what really happened. That's why Kanye mad. He took his shit and mastered it, boy. That's mm. what happened, period. That 808, man, Kanye didn't know what he did with that album. He mm. changed the motherfucking game. Look at everybody singing, harmonizing. He changed the fucking game, really. Drake took that shit, doubled down on that bitch, and it's his now. Yeah, you're That's right. That's the real problem. You, you gave him a blueprint. You mm -hmm. gave him a blueprint on that, man. And uh, also, when you brought up the uh, the situation with you and uh, uh, 50... I, I did fuck with game as far as an MC because I had been paying attention to him for a long time. But I remember even when he was going at you when he said, uh, I braid your little head like a bitch or something like that. It was like a weird ass line. I was like, man, that's a whack ass line. That's like a yeah. prison. Yeah. That's some prison <laughs> shit though. Yeah, isn't so I thought that shit was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, but you, you know, but you, go ahead though. Look, at the end of the day, on that beat, yeah. you know what I mean? My, my old game is crazy. I was the first one that put out there that he was going to change the heart. Yeah. I was the first one put out that the tongue <laughs> ring, you know yeah. what I mean, and was a stripper, but that, here, 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 you know what I mean, me and him cool now, but you yeah. know what I mean, everybody used my shit, 50, all them niggas used my ammo after that, Right. But I'm out here, I live in LA, so I, I hear the rumors, you yeah. know what I mean, so uh -huh. I'm like, you, I love gang, still to this day, that boy got bars like a motherfucker, he do, 52, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah, so yeah. I got the call from the boss, Jay mm. Prince, like, you know, we had to, uh, Rap a lot had the uh the deal going with Rap a lot, Death Row, and uh Irv Gotti, Murder Inc. They was about to perform the first uh, distribution, black distribution company. So in the midst of that, you know, the Ja Rule shit go down. Mm -hmm. Now, when that go down, this nigga get labels hit. You know what I mean? The feds hit rap a lot, the feds hit G unit. I mean uh fucking uh the Death Row. I was riding down Sunset Wilshire when they went through the building and Death Row feds, they crushed all that shit down, went up in there. And they hit motherfucking murder in. Mm. Them niggas go to jail. Jay Prince so tight on his shit that he don't go to jail. Suge, he already in jail. But the shit gets shut down. So when that happened, you know what I mean? The phone call gets made like, yo, bro, you know what I mean? I need you to get on bro ass. Now, this time I'm listening to 50. I love 50. That album was the hottest shit. And I'm listening to, what up, blood? What, what up, cuz? I get a phone call. Yeah. It's going down. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Same thing listening to the game shit. Game got signed for my nigga JT, the bigger figure from uh, Frisco first. Mm -hmm. So I been knew about the game from JT fucking with him. So I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this nigga the proof. Mm -hmm. I'm loving this shit. And then he dissed me. Now I'm like, oh, man. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So at the end of the day, man, sometimes you, 
you really dig the motherfucker. You know what I mean? That's what Drake going through. He like, I love Kanye. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, you know what I mean? Oh, man. <laughs> I got to get on it. You know oh, I mean? yeah. So, I feel you. I feel you. I love for a motherfucker, but man, this competition shit is, is main. Yo. The motherfucker going, going to fit, period. You put yeah. a motherfucker back against the wall, he coming out swinging and blasting. Yeah. Period. Back yeah. up. That's what's happening right now, too. Also, we got uh, Young Mouth, you don't mind, bro. You shocked the shit out of us when you call in. I thought, I was like, man, he seemed like he hang around on social media, but I wouldn't expect that. But we got a, a, a one, of our, yeah, we got one of our partners uh, who's also inside the industry as well, OG from Houston. OG, man, you there? You, you know, you on, the live with, you on the line with Thought Crimes and Yuck Mouth now. So <laughs> what's good with you, OG? Oh, uh, shit, man. I'm just listening to that and what's happening. I'm a philan fan. Salute, Yuck Mouth. I've been down with that lunas. I was blowing big when that I got fired. So salute you, homie. Man, thank you, thank you, thank you, man. You, you you out there with the mob, man, huh? Oh, yeah, man, all the time, man. I'll be moving around. I was actually in here in the lab cooking up something, so, you know, but I'll be listening to these guys, man. I follow that show, so I respect people that do good shit, so I just wanted to call in and say, you know, I think Drake's album is going to be phenomenal, mm-hmm. and the reason why I say that is because, you know, whenever you take somebody and you back them in the corner. See, that's the whole purpose of a scorpion, because that's how a scorpion fight. You understand what I'm saying? You know, they back backwards. That's the whole purpose of that shit. And I think his album is going to service two people. It's going to service the females. And I think he's going to go back to the beginning to do what he do. And he's going to have those people who are going to be attracted to that part of the disc. But then I think the other disc is going to be dedicated to that aggressive shit. Just to let a nigga know, you know, don't get me confused with being light skinned. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that he's going to be able to go as hard as he wanted to. So I think he's going to take uh, bits and pieces like over throughout the whole CD. And he going to like, you know, he going to get at niggas, but it's going to be through different songs. I think he's going to spread that shit out through a bunch of different records. I think this album is going to be some of his best work that probably came out a long time, my personal opinion. So y'all both think he's going to shock everybody in the industry? My thoughts, yeah. basically, I think with these seven album, these seven song albums, he's about to kill it with the double, first of all. You're giving a nigga more content, more songs. Secondly, his singles is murdering niggas. We ain't even got the album yet. Let's be real. Jay and Beyonce, he had to team up with Beyonce. You ain't got a nice for what on that album, my nigga. I'm sorry. You ain't got a God's plan on that album. I'm sorry. Kanye shit came out. You ain't got a nice for what or a guy's plan. You know what I mean? Pusha shit came out. Hardest in the street. I love it. You ain't got a guy's plan or a nice for what, my nigga. So we ain't even heard the rest of the album. And he killing niggas. I'm sorry. He lost the battle. But he's killing the charts, my nigga. So at the end of the day, it's a rap, period. Just with him putting out two albums with these seven song albums. He got them. Back though. It's a rap, period. And another thing, too, I want to say is, you know, y'all got to look at it from this perspective, too, man. It's like y'all was talking the other night when I was listening to the show. I just didn't call in when y'all were talking about who was the best lyricist and shit, right? Like, I'm a real big motherfucking Kendrick Lamar fan. But here's the difference where Drake got a lot of niggas beating this shit. He's lyrically just, an, he's lyrically good enough for you to respect him that you know his pen game is wicked, right? But at the same time, he do something better than most of these other niggas can't do. He's very good at making commercial records. You understand? It's like, it's very, very difficult for a lot of motherfuckers to keep their artistry but still make commercial records. And that nigga never disappoints. Every single time he drop a record, you are going to find yourself singing that motherfucker whether you like it or not. Right. And that's what... <laughs> and that's what... And that's what and that's what good songwriters are supposed to do. So when you talk about being the best, you got to think about it. That's what made Tupac special. That's why when niggas be trying to compare themselves to Pac, I'll be like, ah, uh, nigga, you got to think about it. Pac was one of the best motherfuckers at being socially conscious, but still making it commercial. Because you got a lot of niggas that be writing socially conscious records, but you can't hit them hoes in the club. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Well, both of you guys, right. like, y'all bring up a good point because we talked about this before too. We was like, you know, Jay Z lyrically is dope, but we understand that he has to uh, get the female energy through his wife. Where Drake, he gets the masculine and the feminine energy by himself. 
Yeah, man. You know what, mm-hmm. uh, Young Mouth man and uh, OG from Houston man, um, it's great that you brought that point up. And you know, Young Mouth being on the West Coast, and then if people know the marriage between Houston and, and the West Coast as well in the early days of UGK, Big Mike, and all them cats, you know, it's oh, really? kind of a lot of synonymous energy. That's why um, DJ Quick, when he was like just like Compton, he shouted out San Antonio yeah. as well because it was all that energy. But one thing you brought up though, OG, we was talking about uh, making hits, and this is where like I was arguing people when it came to Kendrick. Like I like Kendrick. Kendrick, I think with this damn album, this is the first time he's able to completely master making pop um, commercial hits that can move the, that can move the women, but also make the you know the socially conscious shit that people really enjoy his core fan base. So when you think about like look at like Tupac, man, this nigga was so all over the place, but he had it perfect. Listen to a song like How Do You Want It. If you listen to all three of the verses, they all hit different things. You know what I'm saying? So in the song, he just casually drops C. Dolores Tucker, but still <laughs> making a classic ass song where you can rock in the club with it. Because <laughs> right, right. it, it's like boxing. You ain't going to win a fight all night throwing a jab. So as a songwriter, you got to be able to say that you can have some balance. See, most niggas either go one way. They either be super motherfucking gangster or either they be super, super soft. But when you cooking, goddamn, and you making a whole motherfucking Thanksgiving Day meal, your motherfucking sweet yams and potato salad can't be nasty to the motherfucker, but your turkey be good. You dig <laughs> what I'm saying? So that's that's the same way when you're doing a motherfucking record. All that shit got to complement each other. So when you eat it, you be like, damn, this motherfucking cook. Mm-hmm. So when you listen to somebody's album, Every record don't necessarily have to be a single, but if the flow of the album flows, then you can pick which one is going to be a single. Because what a nigga going to say is, man, I could put this nigga album on and turn that motherfucker on and just ride. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I be telling songwriters, listen, fuck all that shit about trying to make a smash. Go in the studio and make a body of work. Just keep writing. Just keep mashing. Before you know it, if you done cranked out 30 you gonna have ten songs that's gonna flow within each mo- in that motherfucker. You gonna have a single or two or three in that bitch. Yeah. You understand me? But a lot of niggas go in the studio. They go in that motherfucker. They be trying to write that one record. And then when they write that one record, it's like, well, shit. Now you got to get on the road. Yeah. Now you got to hurry up. Cause I be telling niggas all the time, just cause you can overturn thirty mixtape, nigga. How many of them motherfuckers is quality? Yeah, no doubt about that, OG. Uh, yo, Yuck Mouth. Um. Uh, to OG's point, um, you know, you've, you've tracked well in your career, you know, and I, I noticed because, you know, I'll, I'll catch like the replays of your streams because like I just think sometimes you just be funny as hell to me. And uh, the fact that you got on social media, like even me growing up. You know, I had a chance. Yeah, you're, you're a funny it, nigga, man. Yeah, I yeah, I had a chance to. Yeah, we, we like we have a chance to. Yeah, real ancient old. Yeah, man, we get a, we get a chance to understand who you are better. But you know, it was funny because when you was giving Drake's props, right? And we we know we got like these 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 devout hip hop purists. You know, I love hip hop, but also I can see it from all angles too. But when you brought up Drake. Right. Dudes were like, nah, fuck Drake. Yuck mouth, you real hip hop. Yeah, yeah, man, fuck all that. And you was trying to explain why you felt Drake was a, a, a well rounded, complete artist. And they were kind of missing the point when they just wanted to keep it on bars. And you was talking about making body works, just like OG was saying. You want to speak more to that? Like, why, why you feel Drake is uh, who he says he is? And what do you feel about him as an artist? At the end of the day, man. Um... Me being a, a fucking executive, you know what I mean? And me being around the industry 20 years, man, the, the talk around the campfire when you go up in these record labels is you need a triple threat, period. If an artist is a triple threat and got hits to back it up, we out of here. We got one, period. Thanks. Drake is a fucking triple threat. No matter how you want to line the triple up, he's a triple threat. He's like a quadruple because he can act, you know what I mean, sing, rap, and the bitches love him. So, boom. A quadruple threat, you know what I mean? He may, Oh, then he making the hits, five. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, come on, man, at the end of the day, man. It's a rap, my nigga. Like, this dude is dope as shit. You know, he took Kanye style, mastered the motherfucker. He relates to the youth like nobody else ever. This nigga could throw shit on the wall, and it's a fucking hit. His mixtape songs are fucking top hits in the billboard. This is mixtape throwaway shit. Shit collabs, he get on niggas like little collabs. They blow up. 
Like, let's be real, man. You know, the Migos came out. It was dope with the Versace. But when Drake got on that bitch, it was out of here. The Migos was here. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's now, what took them niggas' career to the next level. And, I know. and that's what he do to everybody. The uh, the new one, Look Alive. Well, look at what, what, what old boy doing now. He's on fire. JB Block Boy. Even so the record. Yeah, yeah, even the record that Lil Wayne produced. The fucking record. Period. And then he, uh, what's the new little nigga that? He's a comedian. He's a, a chameleon, too. He knows how to adapt. I ain't never seen a rapper that could do everybody fucking style. That's all. <laughs> well, there's something else that I want both of you guys to talk about, because you're, you know, about relating to the to youth. At a time when, like, guys didn't want to talk about their feelings towards women, not just lust, but also relationships, their mistakes, things that they lust for and all that. He did that, and at first you had, like, some people trying to go after him for that, but it turned out to be very popular and very relatable for a lot of millennial men. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, man, I'm Kanye a... started that shit, man. Come on, let's not let's not act like Kanye didn't start the square talk. Hey, <laughs> buddy, what's gangster? Are you yeah, I'm you... talking about the square, female, dating talk. That All that shit came from college, dropout, and all that shit, man, period. Mm-hmm. Let's be real. Yeah, Drake yeah. took that whole content and ran with the shit, but he's living it. He's fucking on these celebrities. He's fucking on these big booty strippers and shit. And he's rapping about it and, and name dropping. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everybody know these famous strippers, these famous Instagram thoughts, and these famous celebrities. And it's, it just relates to the youth mm-hmm. like none of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yo, so, yeah. I mean, it is. Uh, Who else is making it some new yeah. No Frank Ocean. <laughs> no, that's a great point. OG, uh, to Yuck's point. Uh, he said that, you know, like, basically, Drake, Shang Tsung, Kanye style, which I, I do agree that there's certain portals that are open or reopen in hip-hop, and Kanye West's energy to counter 50 Cent's energy was a, a portal that was open or reopen in hip-hop, because we did have Little Brother running around, but it was packaged better with Kanye West. But OG, from uh, yeah. do you feel like, even with this weird frenemy energy, uh, energy uh, with Kanye West and Drake, do you think that has something to do with Kanye... Uh, astutely observing and understanding that Drake mastered his style better. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It's Dark Vader against Luke Skywalker, man. <laughs> you know I mean, what I mean? I, I, cut, the nigga, cut the nigga Luke Skywalker hand off. Okay, you got my hand, nigga. We don't get a robotic hand. We coming back on Hip Hop Strikes Back on the next one. We're going to beat your ass, Dark Vader. I mean, it's the same shit. Period. Well, you, you know, know what I mean? I, I, it's Luke Skywalker versus Dark Vader, my G. Who got the four? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I think a lot of niggas would probably feel that a lot of niggas borrow from a lot of niggas. Mm. So if you go back and if you listen at uh, Drake's early work, he'll tell you that shit. You know, even when you look at some of his early videos, the nigga told you he, he was a fan of Pusha T. He bought the nigga microphone. Mm. So I'm pretty sure that throughout the course of his career because niggas get influenced. I mean, let's be real. Look how many niggas that it, it was influenced by Tupac that wanted to be this nigga. You understand what I'm saying? So, but look, it, it, look, it, look, it, look, let me chime in right quick with, with you being on that point before I forget because I'm smoking this shit. <laughs> Drake said, if I have to reach out to son, like, what he saying? <laughs> he admitted that, that, you know what I mean? You follow this shit, but you have to reach out to son. And I had to help you do it. Like, you know what I mean? Like he, he said that in that in that duppy, you know what I mean? Whatever oh, yeah, that bar sure. was, I don't know how it wasn't exactly verbatim, but it was sort of like that. You know what I mean? You probably could say it word for word. But he was like, "Why the father had to reach his hand out, even though that was the name of the song?" But still, keep it out though. You gotta keep the real subliminal. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm pre- I'm pretty sure. Again, I'm pretty sure that at some point in time, he probably listened to that nigga shit. And probably was like, okay, let me take this. I think all artists do that to a certain degree. We listen to that motherfucker shit and be like, okay, well, let me take this and let me see how I can flip this and make this shit better or, and still keep it me. But, you know, nah, nah, uh, I'm, I'm going to I got I to do it one more time. Just on the real, you know, no, Scarface. And even, as much as Scarface was probably influenced by Ice-T and, you know what I mean, all the dudes who did the shit earlier, he rapped like Face. He didn't take shit from them. NWA, right. as much they were really influenced by other motherfuckers. They rap like NWA. They didn't take shit from nobody. So we was more original in the 90s. Right now, it was cool to like take pieces and bits and, you know, rap alike, doing the same beats or whatever, the same cadence, whatever. It's cool. I, I, so, I would agree with yeah. that, Yuck, but here's the, here's the catch on that, though. The, the object right. ain't to 
the, the object ain't to listen at a nigga to jack him. The object is to listen at a nigga to see what you can use for him to take it and formulate and create your own. Now, see, what I listen at when when I listen at a nigga, I listen at it for two reasons. I listen at him to see how he gonna inspire me, and then I listen at it to see what I can learn from him, and then go back and make it my own, not to go back and replicate. And see, that's what a lot of these artists don't understand. They don't understand how to go back and listen. Let me say, okay, the Migos is doing X, Y, and Z, but let me see how I can take this and formulate and create my own personality. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like, for instance, you ain't going to tell me that Charlie Wilson wasn't listening as Stevie Wonder because he used the same background vocals for him. And if you close your eyes, you would think they sound alike. But still, when you hear Charlie Wilson, you know that's Charlie Wilson music. You ain't going to tell me that R. Kelly wasn't listening at Aaron Hall. You can tell. But what R. Kelly was able to do was was to take what Aaron Hall didn't do. See, Aaron Hall wanted to start doing that old soft-ass shit R. Kelly came behind his ass and say, oh, this nigga ain't tapping into the real nigga market. I'm talking about pussy and fucking. So let me take his bald head. <laughs> let me take what he was doing. <laughs> let me flip this shit and make it me. Hey, yo, yeah, OG. Yeah, because I think that's oh, what Drake did. Like, yeah. just to, to talk to your point, Yuck Mouth, the reason why I was talking about, you know, the whole relationship thing, even though, of course, Kanye started it, Drake took it in a different direction, though. It didn't sound exactly the same as Kanye, and yeah. I think that's why maybe some Gen yeah. Xers wasn't really feeling it as much as, like, the millennial guys. Yeah, man. You know, also, yeah. also, uh, OG, real quick, when you was talking about influences, uh, it's like out there where you at, you got Ronnie Spencer, and you can, you know, you can feel Ron Osley all through his shit, but he took it and flipped it right. and, and kind of gave it a, a more street, grittier edge to it. You know what I'm saying? He going to say the words Absolutely. that Ron Osley wasn't going to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. And that's what it's all about, bro. So, you know, imitation is the best form of flattery but when you listen at a nigga you don't listen at a nigga to just come out it's like imagine a, a nigga putting on mc hammer pants and coming out and dancing just like hammer that's why vanilla ice after a while people's like what is this nigga doing you understand what i'm saying because you just can't come out and be exactly like a nigga it might work for a second but you ain't gonna have no legacy with this shit let's just keep it a hundred but if you are artist I think as an artist, you're going to get inspired by everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's like shit. I love West Coast music. Mm -hmm. I've always been a fan of West Coast music. You know, I was born in Chicago. So Chicago was raised up in Chicago, but partially from Houston. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But shit, we always was on that West Coast music. But see, in the South, you know, niggas was like, we got love for what they doing, and we borrowed some of them elements. Like, niggas was putting the worm in they motherfucking beats when they was producing it, but mm -hmm. Yuck Mouth, you can attest to that. That's a West Coast thing, you feel me? You know, when niggas was producing them beats like that. So, right. but I mean, I understand, I understand where you, I understand where you coming from, too. I just, I, I, and you know. I think it's, it's not a bad thing. I'm just, you know, narrowing it down to what it really is. You know what I mean? No, you did. Did. That, that, mm -hmm. no, I agree with you all the way, all the way. Mm -hmm. This is like corrupt. It's not no fuck. Not, let's not even name corrupt and crooked eye. Let's go with Jay Z and Biggie. Jay Z used to rap like the food food snickers. Let's yeah. see, one hundred. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then he started rapping like Biggie. Yeah, you know I mean, but mastered that motherfucker and took it over when Biggie died. So mm. it's people who do that. That's dope. You know what I mean? But Drake is a dope ass artist, regardless who he sound like. He's able to sound like multiple dudes. Nobody could do that. He's talented. And if and, and then my thing is this. When you do R&B and when you do pop, you can have writers, bro. I'm in the industry. They have writers. They have songs already made, and they sell them to artists. And the artists put their vocals over them. This is when you get into that pop era and the big shit. You can't just be in there in the studio smoking weed and writing some shit that's going to get topped. You know what I mean? Like across the whole. That's how I get most of my bread. Not just urban, yeah. not just urban, but pop. You know what I mean? Like you gotta have exactly. some real creators in that motherfucker. And then you gotta think, okay, Thriller was one of the best fucking albums ever that Michael Jackson made. But it took Quincy. It took everybody collaboration, writers. It wasn't all Michael Jackson wrote all that shit. It took a lot of collaboration, a lot of writing, and it made a masterpiece when it comes to R and B and pop. Drake is a fucking pop artist and an R&B artist, too. You got to understand. So when you singing, you need them cadence. He did the Caribbean shit. Man, you got to have some writers in there that do that. Period. So you think, do you think and people are being biased just, then, Yuck Mouth? Because, like, if you go to the 50s, like, there were artists who had people just 
create their whole track for them. Even if you look at Motown, you know, the Supreme, they had everything laid out for them. But um, when it comes to certain artists now, they act like, you know, somehow it's different. No, nah, well, that's uh, just, man, when you become the top artist at the record label, you're priority. You can't fumble the fucking ball. We ain't letting no fumbles go down. Now, you could do some features and some mixtape shit. That's cool. But when it comes to your shit, we going to the top. We bringing the best writers, the best producers, the best uh, this, that, and the third. They bringing the best in, man. Motherfuckers got $10 million budgets. You know what I mean? They, they bringing the best in. Period. Mm -hmm. Flat out. Well, you know, I, like, well I'll give you let an them example. Money from the top of the $10 million, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I'll give you an example. Like when I was fucking with Jermaine Dupri at that time, and we was working on the Confessions album, it wasn't just one of us in that motherfucker working on that record. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So right. it's it, it, it's it's more than one person. But here's the catch on that too. You know, like in the '90s, of course, niggas you was looked upon as being whack if another nigga was in there writing your rhymes. Yuck, you know that yourself. You feel me? You know, because, I think, uh, Dre, Dre pop, Easy E pop, but it wasn't, right. you know, Dre pop, Easy E pop, and Puff pop. So nobody but, didn't but, look at niggas like that if you could pull it off. Yeah. You know what I mean? But well, as yeah, being a but, top artist, like look at the top MC, nah, we didn't look at you as the best nigga in the game, nah. But you got that off. <laughs> you did? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, what is popular music, though? Popular music is once you cross over to the white folks. You we talk, Now, if you're talking about being an MC, if you're talking about being an MC, niggas wouldn't respect the niggas like that. If a nigga, like, imagine if you found out that a motherfucker was writing Jay-Z lyrics. And if they are writing shit, Jay-Z smart enough to know that you that we'll never find out about it until uh, it got to be a top-tier motherfucker that really, really pissed them off. But, you know, well, niggas that... Pr N niggas that profess themselves to be MCs, MCs, and Drake professes himself to be an MC. So at the end of the day, that's why niggas would shoot. Well, that's why Meek shot the hole at him because he was like, "Well, damn, this nigga professes himself to be an MC, but he don't write his his own lyrics." I think the game is a little bit different than when it was like in '94 and '95. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's like most of these uh, songwriters. A lot of these songwriters, a lot of these rap artists who are making records, most of them are considered pop artists because who buying their music when you go to their concert? Look at Triple X, look at Lil Pump, look at Lil Yachty. You see a lot of white kids now. So anytime that music cross over to that genre, you consider the pop artist pop. Uh, you consider the pop artist, uh, artist automatically off the top. It ain't no pressure on you no more because ain't nobody giving a fuck at that level. If you do write your lyrics, if you don't, unless you're just a true, true, true MC, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let me let me clear this up too, man. A lot of artists get songs sent with hooks on it. You know what I mean? Like a Nate Dog. You know what I mean? Or you know what I mean? You have somebody else singing on it. Is that considered somebody right for you as an artist? Say it again. Somebody wrote the hook and gave the hook to you. Is that considered like somebody right for you? If you wrote your lyrics though, but somebody gave right, you right. a hook and wrote. Is that considered having somebody write write for you? I mean, what's up with that? Well, now that's 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 not considered as somebody writing for you. That's called a co-write. See, let me break it down for you. See what happens is, let's say me and you go in the studio right now, and if you wrote the hook on the record, and if I wrote the verses on that motherfucker, then what needs to happen is we got to do a split sheet. You already know that. Now, when we do that split sheet, we got to come to a mutual agreement to say, well, what do you think is fair that you wrote the hook? And I wrote the verses. Well, me personally, I'm just going to say, well, nigga, fuck it. We got to eat anyway, so let's just bust it down a little <laughs> so it won't be no argument. Right. 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 So, right. Exactly. I'm just saying, I know that because I'm an artist, you know right. what I mean, public company and everything. But I'm saying people nowadays, you know, a lot well, of that, artists that get hooks and songs given to them, you know what I mean? And Drake probably got yeah. hooks and songs given to him, too. But you know now, what? Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Real like, quick, it's, yo, it's, yo. It's, 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 yeah, you know what, real quick, no, Yuck, Yuck, and uh, OG, if you don't mind if I just interject, uh, and I, I'm going to let you finish, OG, and Yuck, you brought up some great points. That was a great question because uh, on record, one of the first artists that I've probably seen, at least in my lifetime, you know what I'm saying? Because I know in like 94, 97, like, you know, that was like baby little kid. But the first artist rapper that I saw come on record and say, I have writers, I have songwriters for hooks and bridges was 50 Cent. Remember, he was bragging about it. He says the difference between me and other rappers is that I'll actually get a songwriter for my hook, right? And I think 
that formula has always been around, but you you know you're kind of seeing more of it now because uh, to OG's point, when we start to get in this energy of X's uh, music and triple uh, uh, triple red, you, you see they're more harmonious with a lot of stuff. Even throwing it back to what you guys was doing with the Lunas, Yuck Mouth, and also we were talking about Bone Thugs and Harmony Do or Die. But now we're in a space where like Kendrick Lamar, all these guys, they they have songwriters in the studio with them to create that yeah. that pop sound. And also speak on the Melly Vanilli thing too, because I find it interesting. You go back to the nineties, that's was that was something big and they weren't they weren't even rappers. They were singers and they had a whole track done for them. I mean you, you know, two, yeah, two thousand eighteen. They were dancers and lip singers. But no, that's real, but but let me tell y'all who wrote that track though. You know who wrote that track for Melly Vanilli? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Kevin Lyles wrote that track. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck Kevin out of here. Lyles. I'm dead fuck serious. Out of here. <laughs> I'm dead serious, dog. Yeah. I'm dead serious. <laughs> that that, that <laughs> Millie Vanilla shit, Kevin Lyles wrote that track. Now, here's the thing, no. I was going to answer your question, young man. Who was it sung by, though? It was sung by some people from overseas, like a whole little yeah, old, yeah, they they got, old shit, though. Yeah, they, they were some old like motherfuckers. They were old as shit. So they didn't write yeah, they it. Some old. Kevin Lyles wrote nah, it for they, the old clip. Yeah, he, he wrote that motherfucker, and I think it was like another songwriter, but they wrote that motherfucker, and the old motherfuckers was the one singing it. But uh, wow. what I was going to say was is that me personally, I man, I got my first publishing deal when I was 17. So, you know, I've been signed mm -hmm. Atlantic. I've been signed to So So Deaf. My father was best friends with Sam Cooke. You know, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with it if you just be honest about it. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Because your brain, no matter how talented you are, see, the way I operate is, see, I feed better off of working with other people, even though I can't do a record alone. But see, what I'm not going to do is, is put it out there in the public like, nigga, I'm doing whoop de whoop de whoop all by myself, and I'm an MC, nigga, I don't whoop whoop, and you then somebody say, man, that nigga don't even be writing all that shit. You understand what I'm right. saying? That, that, that's when it becomes a problem. But there's nothing wrong with uh, there's nothing wrong with having other people come into the studio with you because some people generate their uh, creative juices by bouncing ideas off of other people. You know, if, if Yuck Mouth say, well, shit, somebody brought him a hook, well, that's exactly what it is. It's like, okay, well, shit, he didn't write the hook, I wrote the hook. You know, when it become a problem, when them outside motherfuckers be like, well, the hook is the best part of the song. No. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what it that's, that's, that's what become a problem. Let me, let, me, let, me let, me, let me chime in. Not, not, not to stop you. Let me chime in on the hooks. I wrote that I got five on the hook. And I said it. And we were like, ah, that sounds whack. Let's have a singer sing this shit. So what do we call? I write all my hooks, basically. You know what I mean? It's probably like probably one or two dudes that probably really came to sing. But I write all my hooks and let dudes sing it. Period. I'm not 50. I don't go get them to write it. I do do my thing. And then, I mean, woo, woo, woo. So what do you call that? When you write the hook and you had to sing it, sing it, what is that? That's still creating that, that, that's still, that's still your derivative work. That's your work. See. Oh, I know that, that's, but that's, you, you, right, right, you right. consider like the singer being like a dirtbag singer because I wrote the hook or we made magic. It's about the collaboration, no, 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 no. bro. Like you said, yeah, but, it's about the vibe but, in, in the studio. If I can't sing, you can sing, get in that motherfucker and sing it. Not only well, can see, you sing, you can like Marshall from Club Nouveau. This is a Club Nouveau song. Oh, wow. The universe right, is right, lined right. up. Get brother well, in there, I, let him sing. I said, and then we good. Period. You right. And we make magic. Uh, so it's a collaboration. So sometimes it's a collaboration with all arts, you know what I mean, the singers. And we make that shit together. You know what I mean? And the producer, I bought the Club Nouveau album, you know what I mean, to the studio. and had Tone Capone, right, we right. mix it, do it. So it's a collaboration to everybody at the end of the day, man. So nobody could not drink. You know what I mean? For having writers and doing collaborations. Because studio time is collaborations with the producer, with the artist in the studio. Yeah. Period. That's right. what it's about. Yeah, you can I... come out with magic. Yeah. End of the story. Yeah. Like, hey, who wrote this? And then let me let me uh chime in on one more thing. <laughs> Easy E was the first one to claim that somebody wrote rhymes for him mm -hmm. in nineteen eighty nine. And he said, Ice Cube, write the rhymes that I say. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Reverend he was the first one. He was yeah. the first one. Oh no, no, this is what I was saying. Yo, this is yo. 
But here's the thing. This is all I was saying, Yuck Mouth. No, I wasn't saying like 50 was like, yo, somebody write my bars. He just said... He was bragging like why I got the hits and other dudes from New York don't got the hits because I actually take time with song structure. Uh, OG, what were you going to say? You was uh, tell you was talking about uh, the continuation of the collaboration process, which is what Yuck was pivoting off of too as well. But go ahead, OG. Right, right, right. No, but what I was going to say was is that when I said that it only becomes a problem, uh, like for instance, a lot of times you see groups break up and jealousy start to happen when somebody say they like this person better mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. some weird some weirdo ass bitch come and say oh you wrote that hook oh you didn't write mm-hmm. that that's my favorite part of the record <laughs> so my point of yeah. it is is that like a lot of that old type of clown ass shit be happening and see if you a weak motherfucker then you will let that shit get to you but other than that when you understand the professionalism on the way that this gut that this game go then, of course, you're going to always have people who are going to say, listen, smart motherfuckers are going to say, listen, I embrace having songwriters come in and work with me. As long as you contribute to the record, that's all important. It's like cooking a meal. Nigga, you ain't going to be the only one, you know, contributing to cooking that motherfucker. But at the end of the day, if we run in a restaurant, we want to make sure that the food is going to taste and be prepped. So you can't get in there and cook that shit, season and do it all. You need people to do that shit. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the same thing. But I'm, I think that the problem comes in when certain folks might listen at it. Like me, when I listen at a record, the hook ain't nothing without the verses. But you do have people that say, well, I only remember the hook. I only remember this. You got some people, they couldn't tell you now one motherfucking thing that uh, uh, Kendrick is saying doing the verses of Be Humble. All they know is just Be Humble. Because that melody and that bar is what's sticking in your head. So that's what makes a great songwriter or songwriters who can melodically create things that are going to stick to your brain. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's not, and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you're able to go in. There are people who can go in and do make that shit happen by themselves. They don't need nobody. And then there are other people who are like, I need to have other people to come in and kind of... Uh, uh, kind of get my juices flowing. You know what I'm saying? I think it's only a problem when outside people start to poke holes at that kind of shit, which is what Meek did. And Meek did that shit for whatever reason. He might have been mad at Drake. You never know what's going on on the inside of a nigga camp. So I can't speak on another nigga business, but I've been around this game long enough to know, and I'm sure you can attest this. All it take, man, is for one suck-ass nigga to make one comment <laughs> or one flake-ass bitch to make one comment, and then you'll find out and see what a nigga really think of you. Mm-hmm. How many of the groups done broke up or how many good people, good motherfuckers done broke up because of some bullshit and OG, or what outside motherfuckers have said. You make a great point can because we, I, I think that could even relate to, to filmmaking, directors, comedians, and all that too because like even on a lower level with uh, Prince and I, you already have people that don't know what goes on behind the scene with what we do together and who does what. But you'll have them be like, oh, sincere this or oh, Prince that and not real realizing it's a team, yeah. you know? To yeah. get everything ready, to get everything done. Yeah, yeah. I watched that in a career, even with, like, you know, Young Mouth, when I was, like, uh, you know, reading about things with you, and even how you was have, having to handle other shit that was going on in the West Coast at the time. And you seemed to be, for the most part, you was just very, like, look, I'm a real person. I'm not going to play into this industry bullshit. I happen to be in the industry, and that's what it was. How were you able to keep your head level, uh, just to OG's point and what Sin was saying, when you have people coming into, you know, outsiders, especially the fans, they trying to drop side shit in your ear, trying to change your, your position against a homie in your camp, or somebody you've been rocking with. How were you able to keep your head leveled in all of that? I mean, shit, I don't know it. Like, on some real shit, me. Hold on. With, with the echo. But, uh, let me get on the echo going. But, um, me and Nub, my, uh, loony partner, we done broke up because of, side niggas from his crew and my crew like you the best no you the best and then we get this egotistical war against each other and then we're like oh fuck you you know what i mean and we done grew up with each other and you know what i mean then the five ain't there no more we in the studio and the, 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 the creative juices ain't there no more it's like it just fucks everything up the side people and they want that because they part of the ride they enjoy the roller coaster when that shit stop they hopping off and jumping on the next ride niggas don't know that you know, so you listen to your homeboys, they fuck your opportunity on the fire saying, hey, this nigga better, you better, oh, fuck that nigga. Split y'all up. Facts. You know what I mean? Now you with them bum niggas, you know what I mean? And the other nigga probably doing this thing or whatever. 
Now you, you know, you at the bottom of the totem pole, you ain't you. You ain't you no more. Basically, mm, kind of high and smoking on weed and shit, but you ain't you no more, basically. So they didn't knock you off your fucking pedestal, knock you off your square by side talking in your ear. So I done been through that shit. Me as a real nigga, I'm going to reel it back in. I'm going to tell my homie, like, oh, uh-uh, fuck that. Let's get this money. You know what I mean? Fuck the side talk. You the best. You the best rap ever. <laughs> Period. Mm. <laughs> you the best. Like, you got to really, like, convince your dudes, convince your team. Like, if you the coach of the team, like, yo, go out there. You the best. Hey, yeah, you the best. You the best. Period. Let's go. Let's do it. You got to swallow your pride. You know what I mean? Mm. A lot of motherfuckers don't swallow their pride. That's why a lot of beef going back. You know what I mean? Swallow your fucking right. pride. Make a phone call. Put make a live chats and all this shit about niggas. Make a phone call. Be <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Be, be niggas be all those live call. chats. Do Fuck that nigga. Fuck that nigga. I don't can't do stand them. Fucking Instagram live. If you got a nigga number, yeah. call me. Yeah. Call the dude you got beef with. And be a real nigga, man. We too old to be playing these little kitty games, man. And you got 45-year-old niggas, 42-year-old, 50-year-old niggas doing live chats instead of calling the motherfucking really live chat. You did? Yeah. So at the end of the day, man, um, the rumors and, and, and the clips definitely split up, motherfuckers. Because, you know what I mean? You got different dudes from different neighborhoods, different, you know, whereabouts. And they come in the studio with that. So it's they crew and show crew. That should have separate any group. Mm-hmm. Period. I, I salute the fucking Wu Tang. Mm. I salute, you know what I mean? Niggas like. Hold on, man. It ain't too many you can name that stuff together, but I salute Red and Method Man. Even though they ain't official, right, right, right. Right. they stuck it through. Yeah. No matter what. Wu Tang yeah. or uh, uh, Death Jam, they still rocking. Yeah. Like, you gotta still rock with your people. That, that bring the money in at the end of the day. You can't like, like, you can't forget that. Yeah. Like motherfuckers that take you off track and you'll be broke with them. You gotta mm-hmm. that for the money. Shit. That is true. I'll give you an example of something that I read yesterday, which right. is kind of disappointing. I was reading where they were saying how New Edition now has broken up again because <laughs> I guess it was found out that Johnny Gill went trademark the name New Edition. Wow. Oh. Wow. And I was like, man, that's, yeah, I was like, that's fucking crazy because when them niggas brought you into the group, but they found out <laughs> yeah, that you yeah. trade. Well, that's some dirty so I, shit, man. That's wild, yeah, man. I, heard, I never knew. Well, yeah, they, you, you, they you said that. Uh, I never knew why they broke up. I'm seeing this shit online. That's why. That's some scavenger shit. Yeah, yeah well, that, they, that, well, that, that, actually, that's they... they yeah, I was just reading that shit the other day. They said that uh, Johnny Gill and, and uh, Ralph Tresman did that shit. Mm. And so now I think the new edition is going to do a tour, but it's just going to be BBD and Bobby Brown. But if you think about it, somebody made a good point. They said, well, even though new edition has some big records, BBD was bigger as a group. Mm. And BBD is still more relevant today. They relate to the youth a little bit more than new edition as a group as a whole. So mm. I was just like, cuz, you talking about stabbing a motherfucker in the heart. Like, you're going to go and trademark that name, and you ain't going to tell them niggas. Now, that's dirty. Damn, you that's, that's, that's wild. And, that's, and the, mess, that's it. the messed up thing about it, too, when you do a trademark, you can add other people's names in there, too. He could have added their names in there. He was like, fuck that. I, got all, I want all the money. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Man, that's, that's wild. Crazy. But when but y'all... My point, oh, go ahead, OG. Go ahead, go ahead. Though, no, I'm sorry. But I was going to say, it's that kind of shit right there yeah. that fucks up a good bond right. and, and, and lifelong friends with niggas that came up through the struggle together, you know, because it probably was somebody in Johnny ear telling him, well, you know what? The niggas, you know, they didn't whoop the whoop the whoop until you joined the group, which wasn't true. They needed right. each other. Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? But but New Edition was already a very successful moving train. So yeah. for him to go on trademark that shit that's why that shit was some real clown shit to me yeah also um yuck mouth you know because you was going through you was like man it's not too many motherfuckers you can name you know even you know rest in peace to sean price one of my favorite mcs of all time but even with helter skelter kind of how they held each other down ugk but yuck mouth man you know uh with the loonies you and your party y'all y'all came up from the slums to og's point y'all come up from the bottom and then you get into the industry, you actually get a piece of the money. Y'all start making the money. You're getting tours. But then 
side shit start playing in your partner's ear or side shit comes in your ear, then all of a sudden there's this riff. Like, how, how did you feel about that? You know, knowing that, you know, this is where we came from. We got here. Now this is what, why we split even though all the shit we went through. How, how, how did you feel about that? It was devastating because first of all, me and them, we come from junior high school together. You know what I mean? So we we, we was best friends since lowers. You know what I mean? So we came in as a rap shit together, and then for um, you know, just this just the greed of of the record label. I ain't gonna say nobody name or none of this nobody, but the the greed of the record label fucked everything up. You know what I mean? Like we was a part of Dangerous Crew, the Too Short when we first came in the game. Uh, our first album, Blue Down's first album, Pimp of the Year, that was done by Ann Banks. Mm. The whole fucking album, all the beats on the first album was done by Ann Banks and Dangerous Crew. We was part of that crew. You know, our executive producers start getting that ego. You know what I mean? He was, a, a, you know, a dude in the streets getting that money, you know what I mean? And was looking down on Too Short like he was a bum. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, uh, yeah, I got my jury on Life Too Short. We put all my jury on him. Like that type of dude. And he's spreading these rumors through Oakland and, and like it just split that crew up. So now, us being rappers, we got to defend the fucking executive. We ain't got no problems with Too Short. We look up to this nigga. You know what I mean? So boom, we got to defend this fucking executive. You know what I mean? And then boom, we in beef for Too Short. So boom, second album come out. You know what I mean? By this time, me and them been damn near separated because the crews are splitting us up. You know what I mean? Talking shit about me to him and talking shit about my crew talking shit about him to me. So we split up. I, I formed the regime. He formed his dude, set us on the payroll, whatever. We boom. We signed to Virgin Records, which has a partnership with Rap a lot. So we label mates. So we doing albums together. While we doing this lunatic music, Rap a lot is working on Scarface and Untouchable albums. So Mike Dean and Tony Capone is working on his shit, and then he's working on our shit. So when they come to my studio with the Looney's, it's just me in there. No, I'm gone. You know what I mean? I'm laying out the hook, the verse, and just leave his verse for him to do his thing. And they seeing this shit. Jay Prince coming there a couple of times like, damn, you need a solo, a solo deal. Well, you're doing all the work. So I got my solo deal for niggas partying and not taking this shit serious you know what i mean mm. so boom i get my deal niggas go against me kick me off the group i have to sign to get out the group to get a deal with rap a lot my g so once they signed to kick me out the group and my partner agreed with that i'm like fuck them niggas like how would you be if niggas kick you out of group that you created the loony name the logo the, all that shit i'm a cartoonist i made the logo i made the name the whole shit gave niggas song the whole everything came from me the ice cream man, that's my song. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All that shit, that's my shit. Came from the soul. When a nigga like, yo, you out the group. Just to do a solo deal with nobody praising that. Like, yo, we supposed to be together. It's like a routine. Niggas was at Loud. Niggas was at Def Jam. Niggas was at Job. Niggas was everywhere. But they was getting money together. It was supposed to be that. They got mad at uh, yeah. me. They got mad because I got chose first. Because of my work. My work ethic. Jay Prince and me in the studio laying it down. And niggas wasn't there. Niggas was partying, getting drunk, you know, enjoying their money, whatever. I'm in the studio laying this shit down. Mm -hmm. So they seen that and signed me to rap a lot. So at the end of the day, that, be called, that caused a problem. And that's it. I still got problems with the record label, the old record label to this day. And me and them, we came back together and we getting money. So that's the good thing about it. We squashed our shit. You know, went to numb, dissing me. Like, right when I'm going through the G unit shit with the game and everybody, numb jump on board trying to get to me. Like, where did this come from? <laughs> like, you like, like, roll the wave. Like, right. where did this come from? Right. Then he started up like, man, let me, I had to diss him back. But I dissed him, then he ended up going to jail for them charges and shit. So I felt bad. Because I did, when my diss came out, he went, went to jail. So I felt kind of bad. So he did seven years. He just got out. So mm -hmm. we've been getting money ever since. But... Fuck the crew. You know what I mean? If a nigga in your ear talking Straight shit up. about your money making your your money making machine, fuck him. Period. Because Straight he's up. trying to get to the rest of your money. He's jealous. You know? He's jealous. He's trying to separate that. And he gonna go back, ha 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 man and that boo boo slick the yep. niggas up. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, that's real shit that sticks because I always say. Good. 
Niggas ain't loyal to you. They loyal to the opportunity. They loyal to the opportunity. The roller coaster. Once that motherfucker stop, they on to the next roller coaster. Period. They enjoying the ride, that's my G. Flat yeah, out. That's real shit. It's real like shit. uh when when Prince when he was in college. And he went to four other black men because, you know, at the time, the boondocks and stuff, because he's an illustrator. We both draw and all that. But he went to these these guys and he was like, yo, we could do this. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. yeah so they had yeah. a really good idea. They were starting on it. This white dude comes in like <laughs> saying, yo, Prince think he all that. And Jerry all this, all this crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And they allow they their insecurity, their jealousy, and all that. They allow this dude to come in and mess up a very lucrative idea that would have been big at the time. Yeah, because Yuck and OG, this is how it was. It's like this is before all this like the, the wave that we see now on social media with like a lot of black artists, black cartoonists, and stuff and shit. But I, I went to these cats, you know, because you know, I, yeah, I was like, you know, I was at a, I got to a college, man. I was like, man, I, I want to make some money though. You know, I'm in here taking these classes. I want to make some money, so I was, I went to the brothers. Like, yo, this is what we can do. Everybody know, like, my style was, you know, as far as the rendering, it was like, you know, oh, he the best at this, that. I didn't give a fuck like that. I just wanted to make some money because everybody's good at something. You know, I can't, it's like if you go in the it's studio, like, I can't write, if I can't write the song in the hook, like, you can be the engineer, you can be the organizer, you can be the illustrator, whatever. So this dude was the 2D designer, the 3D designer, this guy do the background. I was looking at it like that. But, the, yeah, the white guy came in and, he basically said, yo, like, why y'all up under him? And why he the head of And I'm like, why are you talking? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you're not even black. Like, what are we doing? But the the whole point right. is, is that I just saw everything go to shit. And I left it alone. And in the long run, we all lost because you miss out on money-making opportunity. Similar to what Yuck Mouth was talking about with the Lunas. And is what OG has seen in the industry as well. And people don't understand how powerful that is. It's like, like when I listen to, uh, going back to the G Unit thing. I remember listening live and 50 Cent said, uh, because uh, Game said, I don't have no problem with Jada Kiss, Nas. He's like, yo, I like them. I respect them. It is what it is. And then 50 was like, he's out of G Unit. And I was like, damn, like, can a nigga get a phone call? Can we, like, hash it out? First? But, but, but that energy is very real. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that fast, the money train can be over. Uh, Young Mouth, you've seen that repeatedly, right? Oh, man, off the track. With the, the loonies, hold on, man. Let me go blind. But yeah, uh, with the loonies, you know what I mean. With everything that a dude that been a part of, man. Money split up crews, period. You know what I mean. Rumors split up crews. Bitches split up crews, man. So with my regime crew, it's a no looking at a nigga girl policy. It's a keep the money straight through the middle. Nobody side me. We all business partners. We fifty fifty. So the money is right. You know what I mean. And we all move as one. You know what I mean? When somebody got something coming out, we all posting this shit. He feels very important. When I come out, yes, everybody posting my shit. I feel very important. So we, we like, you know what I mean? Just bring it all together, man. Because at the end of the day, a motherfucker will beef with you for not posting this shit nowadays. Mm -hmm. Oh, you done post me on the gram, nigga. Fuck you. <laughs> that's what I'm going right. through with the other dude. You seen some dude, the dude that's going hard on me, but on the, on the lot, mm -hmm. this dude been doing this shit for about a year. Mm. All because I didn't post his shit on the gram. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> that's wild, so, man. Motherfuckers look like yo, not not no. I ain't help you get no money. I ain't get you a deal. I ain't put you on. You didn't post my shit on the gram, nigga. Fuck you. Whoa, where they do that at? So nowadays it's a sensitive industry right now. That's why I went push it with his gift to Drake. Everybody, oh, he's so 40. Oh, he's the baby mama. Oh, why he did that? Why Drake even mention his fiance? I don't say nothing about that. Why Drake go hard on Kanye West the whole track? I don't say nothing about that. That nigga mentioned his producer. Oh, why he do? Oh, wow, 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 wow. We did too much. So it's mm, that's a good point. So mm. You got to be careful with your words. You got to be careful with how you approach shit right now. Because it's crazy, nigga. That gets too much. You know what I mean? So I just keep you 100, 1,000, right? Sugarcoat mm, shit. Yeah. That's what money is. That's what money is. Yeah. Don't get your money, nigga. Like, period. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right about that. They, you know, and there's some great points you brought up about... It's because it's like what OG says. I'm going to go to OG in a second here. It, it's, it's the truth. It's like... 
Like, I'm not even in the industry like that. You know what I'm saying, OG? Like, I, I fucked with it before. I saw some shit. I moved around, kept it going. Whatever it is, what it is. And then there was people I know that like, I'm cool with cash. I, don't, I haven't talked to them in a long time. But, you know, I seen what things were. And just even from an aesthetic standpoint, when I first saw Drake, OG, uh, I looked at him. I told my partners who were messing around in it. I said, he's going to have some problems later on. They was like, what you talking about? I said, first of all, look at him. Number one, he looks like a model. Secondly, the boy got the talent. He got the skills. He's got a transformative flow. So he's always going to be the villain in the situation. Like people don't understand. It's like, it's the reverse when you, you especially when you're dealing with nigga energy, you, you know, if you just got everything together, it don't matter who you are. You're just a villain in the situation because people think you, you think you're better than them. Right. So, um, to Yuck Mouth's point, when he said, you know, why people's like, yo, why are he going in on 40 and all this type of stuff? But nobody brings up the fact that uh, uh, how people have done Drake over the years and, and how they've tried to sun him several different times. But, uh, OG, you've seen it um, in the industry when somebody has, for the most part, they got everything going for them because you was talking about triple and quadruple threats. Uh, could you also speak to uh, how within the industry, that you can become the villain immediately. And also, before you go, Sin, like, you want to add one other point. I just want to say one quick thing before OG talks is that, you know, Drake has a good team around him about him not messing up himself to appease people who don't like him. You know, when I heard Dave East talking about how he said guys would try to stab him because women thought he was very attractive, and then I see the tattoos all over his face and just how he looked, he looked a little kind bit... Kind of trying to dirty himself he up. He looked a little bit dirty. It's like... Yeah. I see a lot of guys who have a lot of things going for them dirty themselves up just to appease people who don't even like them. Yeah, because you know when when you getting into it, OG, you know when you're dealing with a nigga, one of the first things they say, oh nigga, you think you better. Young man, I'm sure you heard it. They be like, nigga, you think you better than me. Oh, what nigga, you think you better? That's just like an automatic default. But OG, can you speak to that? Like when you kind of got shit cooking for you all together, how you become a villain uh, in those spaces? Well, at the end of the day, it's not at the end, oh, you talking to me? Or you, uh, OG, we, yeah. We, we going OG, to, he was, he said, oh, okay. Yeah, OG, yeah. then I'll go back to you, yo. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I was just going to say, man, that you know where I come well, from, man, it don't really off. matter how much you, uh, it don't really matter how much you dirty yourself up, you know. If a nigga want to put one of them hot ones in you, they're going to go in you. Mm -hmm. So you can look as tough as you want to look. That shit ain't going to save you when a nigga get on your ass. Mm -hmm. and then, don't get elected. <laughs> what Jay Prince yeah. say, don't get elected. <laughs> yeah, man, it, it, it don't mean nothing. You can have all the muscles in the world. You can have all the tattoos in the world. You know, shit, the scariest nigga put a hot one in you, you know. So you just got to, you know, if, if he pressed on the wrong day. And I think that you can become a victim, man. Like, you know, insecurity and jealousy is, is, is a bad emotion to have. And you'd be surprised when you get around a lot of these. I'm sure you can attest to this shit, too. You know, when you get around and you work with a lot of these artists, like a lot of the times my publishing company, of course, you can attest to this too, when they fly me out to go work with a certain artist, like I came from the bottom. I ain't here to suck your dick, nigga. I'm here to write a record. You know what I'm saying? If you're having a diva moment or whatever it is, we can go back. Or if she having a diva moment, we can go back. But we trying to get a record done. I ain't the Aaron motherfucker that's here to run and go get your water and do all that other kind of clown shit. I'm here to write a record. And I say all that to say, you know, motherfuckers be mad and secure. You know, they always feeling threatened. But see, if you just worry about mastering your own self, if you being the best you that you can be, you ain't got to worry about what Drake doing. Because you being the best you that you could be. But that's what be the problem. Motherfuckers be, you know, it's like pocket watching, looking at the next nigga to see what he doing. And that's why a lot of this shit be getting confused. So when a nigga start winning, you know, that's a bad mentality to have because niggas want to say, I got all the hoes when I walk in the club. I got all the money. You don't need all the money. I got all the cars. You don't need all the cars. Niggas only seven days of the week. Let young mouth get some money. Let me get some money. Let y'all get some money. But niggas don't have that mentality. Niggas, niggas have that mentality that they want to sun you. Like I hate, I used to always hate when people say, well, you got to pay your dues. So that means you got to stick your whole dick in my ass? Nigga, I don't need you to teach me manners. <laughs> Nigga, my mama taught me, if you do something good for me, and if you tell me, th if, 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 you, if you put me in a position where I can eat, I'm a real motherfucker. I'm going to forever do right by you. 
You understand me? But people be wanting to feel like they got to drag you through the mud. You got to pay your dues. What the fuck do that mean? Mm -hmm. You got to keep your foot on my motherfucking neck in order for me, or I got to play second to you. See, people want to regulate your confidence. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to say, oh, okay, now it's okay for you to say you the shit. Fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm the shit before I even get there. Already, Respectfully. Man. Already, man. You Yo, understand man. what I'm saying? Uh, young mouth man. And, you, and oh, oh, go ahead, OG. I'm sorry. Way. I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. You got it. Continue. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let Yuck have the float. I mean, that's why I think that should be happening. But yeah. I'm gonna let Yuck have the float. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I think it all boils down to jealousy. You know, what I mean, um, people from certain neighborhoods, certain cities, and watch you grow up, and they feel like they you own them something. You know what I mean? Or they supposed to be there because at one part of time in life, they had more money than you. They looked at you as a little nigga. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when the, when the shit switch up and you become the big boy and they a little nigga, they can't accept it. So that becomes envious in the neighborhood. They start whispering, nigga, oh, fuck that nigga. He don't even come through the hood no more. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That become a, a whole fight with your whole neighborhood, your city. You know what I mean? And all this other extra. And then... But with you being a hot artist, the the top it's, it's a let me say this first of all. Rap the rap industry is the most competitive sport. It's more competitive than football, more competitive than basketball, hockey, all that shit. Everybody's coming for each other head. This is a competition, my G. So when you at the top and you the Warriors and you got the motherfucking championship, niggas is coming for that. The playoffs, whatever, they all coming, they all shooting their shot. So that's what you're going to go through, too. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, to just, you know what I mean? To just level that shit out, fuck with everybody, and make sure everybody gets some money, man. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, fuck with your enemy, man. You know what I mean? Make your enemy like some of, some of my niggas don't have the worst beef with. You know what I mean? We are best friends now, because they expect after that beef. You probably had a bully. I was bullying you in elementary. You finally fought back. You didn't lose a draw. He respect you now. Now you're our best friend. So you never know what your enemy could bring to the table, man. Lay out that welcome mat. Tap in. Don't listen to no Takachis. Go tap in in every city you go to. Make friends. Shake hands. Kiss babies. You made relationships. You plant seeds. Let it grow. So every time you come out there, you're good. In every city you go to. You dig. You can't be cocky. You got to fuck with everybody. That's what makes you the enemy, period. When you don't fuck with everybody, you don't fuck with your hood no more. You don't fuck with the artists. You don't fuck with this, that, and the third. You become the enemy, man. So start fucking with everybody with a long spoon. Not a short spoon, long spoon. Feed them with a long spoon. But tap in with everybody, and everybody can love you, man. Flat out. That's that 48 laws of power shit. They say your enemy yeah. treats you better yeah. than your closest friend. Damn, that point. Um, some Robert, of my enemies. Robert, right, right, right. Yes. Robert Green, yeah, y'all yeah. ain't up on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I only do 46 because it's two of them I don't do. It's one of them that, you know, not verbatim. Well, you got to suck dick to get to the top. I'll never do that. <laughs> yeah. no. well, this actually segues no. into, my, into my question, though. No, but though. it basically say Wait. that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's the, I it's the word. I feel you, like Yuck Mouth. I feel you. Yeah, so I, I do like 46 out of the 48, but that's a, that's a nice dialogue. That. I wanted to ask you. Uh, really you real niggas stopping there by 40, 42. <laughs> right, right. Like 40, 38, nigga. Like, you went way out of pocket. But anyway, man. Yo, to end all the bullshit, fuck with everybody, make everybody feel important, because that's all they want to do. It. Even if a nigga is just bringing them fucking mic on stage, you feel important, he get in the chat. Yeah. Like, you know, involve everybody. When niggas mm -hmm. feel like they ain't important, they start plotting. I know where he at. No, he in the studio right here. It's the nigga that ain't getting the check. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Be How personal. Yeah, you line you up. Line you up like executive. a barbershop, nigga. For real. This is just in my opinion. Now, Jay-Z... Obviously, he must have felt that Drake needed to come fuck with him at title. That's why he sent a yeah. shot at him on the record. And I know, I don't know Drake personally, but just me being the type of, you know, just thinking how he thinking, he probably was thinking with shit. I'm my own machine and I'm my own man. Why do I need to come fuck with you when I can come and build my own empire over here? With Apple. Well, Jay Prince said, hold on, man. Jay Prince said, what? What percentage? We get 20 right, million right, right, like right, that? Right. Liquid? We get 20 right, million right, liquid? Right. Fuck that percentage. We're going to get this 20 million liquid. 
it's a difference from liquid and uh, it could be a would it be like I said what if this is 20 mil on the table right now liquid I'm taking that the fuck out of here man I love you Jay-Z but I'll probably get 20 mil out of 5 10 years being in the game which is probably 20 mil out of 5 10 years it's 20 mil right now on the table man what makes sense like you can't knock a nigga for, for shit that makes sense like if, if it was you what would y'all do if you got 20 mil liquid not payment plan, liquid, 20 mil liquid into your bank account. We, go, we would go or for that 20 mil. Or you got some type of percentage that you probably make 20 mil in 10 years. Hey, we man. Go, oh, I, I, I we get it. I mean, for, me, for, yeah. I, I right. totally get it. But, but I'm saying right. Jay-Z. Fuck out here. Jay-Z, Jay-Z probably was like, I want to keep my foot on this nigga neck because he want to try to son the nigga. And the nigga was like, nigga, I ain't finna. See, some motherfuckers just feel like, I'm pretty sure you didn't count that shit. Dude, you walk in the room. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let's, let's make this announcement. Let's make before you go deep. Drake is a new two pack. <laughs> hey, yuck, hold on, hold on, yuck, yuck. Yeah, start trouble now. Yo, yuck, hold on, yuck, man. And, and OG, bro, OG, yo, we love you, man. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you finish. I ain't gonna Kanye West you, but oh, uh, yuck. We said that shit about the Pac energy. It's just how Drake is packaged. You said that. You yeah, said boy, new Pac. These they, niggas they got new Pac. Boy, boy, these nigga, they own them. These Look, niggas Pac stuff. Pac was acting. Pac was doing all the shit. Like, yeah. he's fucking all the celebrity bitches. Man, what is Drake doing? Come on. The same shit Pac was doing. He was <laughs> fucking on Madonna, fucking on all the nigga, everybody. Like, everybody. Oh, they they, they took doing? it, but They took what it, they took it from. Nigga, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's, uh-huh. let's make this clear. That nigga stood Tiffany Haddock's up. And she could have made a hundred stacks that day. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. That's what type of nigga you dealing with. I would have stood her up too, though. Shit. But you know, that's a two box shit. Like, <laughs> like, like dude, a uh, well, well, let me say this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to gracefully kind of bow out on that. I, I agree with you to a certain degree. I will. I'm talking I will about the movement, this. not not the movement, oh, that, that, not the yeah, yeah. yeah, not the impact, yeah. just the movement. Bro. Yeah. No, we that, talking I, about I, like I we talking we talking about there's an energy fit. Say, yeah, there, there's, there's, he definitely moving like how yeah. Pac moves. Like, like yeah, you gotta look at it like, like this. Yeah, he's a new pop. Yeah, you can listen. Boosie can't say he's boo pop. Nah, 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 nah. Because you gotta look at it like this. You got you gotta look at it. We talking about energetically. Like, come on, man. Like, arguably the most hated nigga in the industry. Hands down. Hands man, like, down. Hand, who hands pop? down. Yeah. Who pop was that? Yeah. Who pop was that? Man, that's fake. Yeah. That yeah. People get it He's confused. Yeah. Nigga with the swaggeristic. Yeah, the first pe- nigga with a joy deal. Uh-huh. I mean, Pac was the first nigga with a Versace deal. I mean, let's, let's, let's run it up. I nah, mean, let's, let's nah. just go bar for bar. People, people get it confused. Let's go. They get it confused when we say that. It's like, nah, we ain't saying Drake ain't got shot up a bunch of times, and he ain't shoot no cops. He ain't drop no dear mama. He ain't did none of that. We're talking about just based on energy, celebrity how shit move stardom. around. Celebrity and stardom, not that's, not the street shit. Celebrity and stardom. That's it. That's what I'm talking. That's about. what we're that's talking it. about. Not not no street shit. Well, Pop you know what? Whole other nigga on that. But, but you know but what's celebrity crazy? Celebrity and stardom. He got it. He's a new pop. But you know what's yeah. crazy? And I, I'm sure OG can attest to this, man. OG, you, you can attest to this in Young Mouth if, if you feel what I'm saying here. This is what's interesting. Remember when Tupac did, ain't nothing like the old school, and he shouted out all of those niggas, right? Then, you know, he, he right. got shot up, went to jail, and then Wendy Williams and people in New York, they like they laughed at him. Like, niggas had their little jokes, and Pac felt betrayed, so he started dissing those very same niggas he gave credit to on that track, ain't nothing like the old school. If you go look at Drake, there's, a, uh, there's an interesting uh, video of him when he's like 17 and this dude he made this right. table from scratch and on the table it's like it's got like Nas, Kanye, Jay-Z like these are all the niggas at some point that's tried to sun him across him when he got older so like it's it's like you right. said it's, it's like you in a weird space you looked up to these guys but now you the big homie on the block right. and your shine is brighter and then they feel some type of way and instead of gracefully bowing out they kind of acting like real hoish about it. We, see, we even saw that for a moment. People don't like to talk about it. Rakim and Nas. There was a moment. It was a yeah. weird energy between them two because Rakim was kind of like, yo, you know what I'm saying? This nigga got he my style. He want to pass the torch. Right. He want to pass the motherfucking torch. Yeah. It's like, man, the hip-hop is a race, my nigga. You got to keep passing the motherfucking baton and let this shit keep going to the finish line, my nigga. You can't just keep the baton and let the race stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got to keep the baton what? going. Yeah, and I, and I definitely think, man, at the end of the day, you know, it's a lot of hate going on with blood, you know, because the nigga he do again, he make good records, 
uh, he do what he do. He's he's extremely fucking talented. You know, I mean, I, I fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? And, and even when Kanye had his motherfucking rant, he broke down. He was like, you know, that's all you hear on the radio all day is Drake and DJ Khaled with mm-hmm. shit. That tells you right there that he already was feeling some kind of way. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, it's a bunch of variables that go on behind the scenes, behind that shit, because people don't remember. Uh, they wanted to do an album together, mm-hmm. uh, Drake and Kanye. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure Jay-Z was like, Hell no, nah, you ain't finna come back and do no album with that nigga after we just did Watch the Throne too. And you know, I don't really fuck with that nigga like that. Mm-hmm. See, that's all the little shit that be going on, the little petty girl shit that we don't know. You understand what I'm saying? That be going on behind the scenes and them type of moves. So, and niggas be in their feelings. Because when a nigga feel like, okay, well shit, since you gonna make this play, then I'm gonna make that play. If you go back and if you listen at that motherfucking Jay-Z album, they giving up a lot of answers to a lot of shit that they was talking about, bro. You just got to listen at that motherfucker real, you know, uh, you got to listen at it carefully when you ain't got nothing to do. Mm-hmm. And you can just zone in and, and get you some wine and roll up one and sit back and listen at it. They dropping a lot of knowledge and they shoot slugs at everybody on that motherfucker. So, you know. Are you talking about, OG, I mean, if you don't mind, uh, you know, for me, to, uh, for, for Inquisition, are you talking about the uh, the Carter's album, or are you talking about the 444 yeah, album? Yeah, the Carter's album. Yeah, oh, okay, absolutely. so you're saying they're they yeah. doing, he, he taking new shots. Yeah, if you go back and if you listen at that album, they dropping and they they taking tons of shots at people on that album. You just got to listen at that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. And you be like, damn, you know, okay, I hear where they coming from with this, and I hear where they coming from with that. So, again, man, me personally, I really do think that this album that Drake is going to put out, this motherfucker probably going to be phenomenal. Mm. That's my personal opinion. Mm. Okay, okay, I feel you that way. Yo, Yuck Mouth, uh, oh, well, go ahead, Sin, go no, ahead. No, no, because we still talk about music. My thing is, yeah. a, my question is going to be something else. So go okay, ahead. well, you know, I'm uh, you know, because Yuck Mouth, uh, like you said, and you, you know, you said uh, for you said it yourself that uh, Jay Prince, you know, he's still because Jay Prince has done a lot in the boxing world, boxing world of promotion. You know, he, you know, he's an avid boxing fan, and you are too. Um, when you look at somebody like Drake, you know, and, and how people see you artistically, and then for you to like, yo, Drake is that dude. Um, and then you think about somebody like Drake, right? He he studied. He'll even tell you, like, he like when you brought up Drew Down earlier, right? A lot of cats of our generation, they don't know who the fuck Drew Down is. But I remember, like, you know, watching an interview and Drake, like, these are people he quoted, like, this boy really went in. He studied people in R&B. He studied people in rap. So he's an avid uh, uh, fan and a, a, a student of all of this. But when you look at somebody like that, uh, how do you feel or what do you think that, uh, what angle he could come back on uh, with this double disc album? I think Drake got a map. I mean, I think Drake, oh, hold on, man. God damn, that shit's still at one. Let me uh, wiggle. But um, I think Drake got it, the shit mapped out. You know what I mean? Going back to what you talked about, not only did he take full take a couple lines in uh, you know, Players Club, but he did a song that shouted out Max Dre. Mm-hmm. The first big boy. You know what I mean? No Jay-Z, no, none of them dudes shouted out Max Dre. You know what I mean? So Drake know how to tap in with the underground and do pop hits. You, you get it? That's how he hop on these songs with the Migos when they make the Versace and the, you know what I mean? When it was the, the, the you know, he, he tap in. Like, you hear him on all the hot shit that's popping flat out. Like, as soon as it's popping, Drake has a fucking remix to it. Am I lying? No, so he knows how to, he knows how to tap in with the youngsters. Yeah. You know how to tap in with the youngsters. You know what I mean? He know how to make them pop hits. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He know how to keep it with the, the hip-hop shit. He be going to all the rap battles, the, the KOD, the KOTDs, and the, you know what I mean? The Smack yeah. DVD, all that shit. He go to battle raps. He was supposed to battle Murder Mook or some shit. Like, he's deep into this battle rap shit. So, he fuck with Daylight. That's my homie. So, he's deep into this real rap shit. So, y'all gotta quit disrespecting Drake like he ain't got no motherfucking boss. You know what I mean? That, that's for my rap a lot niggas. You know what I mean? My dudes that rap a lot is like, oh, this nigga pulled up this shit on the wall and, and it's a rap. This boy got bars. They better, and then they heard the diss. They said the diss would have wiped out the whole fucking industry, bro. Mm-hmm. Even that old one, boy, we went on everybody. Like you said, that scorpion back against the wall, his back against the wall. He went in on everything. They was like, oh, no. 
time bomb. He Period. said, oh, so that no. boy could go. We can't have that, that one. That boy could go, my nigga. Yeah, we yeah, can't leave have that. Leave that boy alone. Yeah. Leave that boy alone. One last question, guys, <laughs> before before we end this. I just really want to get your opinion on the Terry Crews thing. Uh, he, y'all, y'all saw the the um, when he spoke out about Adam, and you know uh, Isaiah Washington came out and said that he's gonna get white ball. He already got kicked off of Expendables four because people don't know that uh, Stallone is close friends with the guy who grabbed his his nuts, and um, oh wow, yeah, and, and also Russell Simmons is also close friends with the guy who grabbed him. So he went and talked about why he didn't do anything. He said. He froze up not because of the money, because most people assumed it was the money. He said he froze up because he he felt if he would have hit him, more than likely he would have went to to prison and then just some other stuff. But I, I just want to get your guys' point of view on that, like you know, as a guy and you're navigating in that industry and how you know if you don't react instantly, you know, like instantly, how people like will ridicule you and and everything like that. I just want to get your point of view on that. Can I go first? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Yuck. You go. I think he should have just fucked him up because at the end of the day, he going through the same black ball shit he would have went through if he fucked him up that he was trying to avoid. That's true. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He said black ball as we speak. I just fucked him up. That would have made TMZ. That would have let you know, like, fuck with him, man. Hey, you either hire him or you don't. Period. But you know, you're black ball, my nigga. It's a wrap. You know what I mean? Period. You didn't find the case and all that. I would have fucked him up flat out. You would have got the same results. <laughs> Why not let the motherfuckers get away with that if you already getting blackballed? That's my opinion. Yeah. What's yours, OG? I mean, I ain't going to lie. I mean, as a man, my natural shit probably would have been like to kick his motherfucking teeth in. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, you know, when you in that world of being like, okay, well, how do I approach this shit? You know, do I approach this shit from a standpoint of... I'm a big black motherfucker. If I jump on this motherfucker, then it's gonna be the typical shit. So can I hit this hit hit, hit this motherfucker in his pockets where it's gonna really hurt? My only question to Terry Crews would be was this: If the Me Too movement had never came to the forefront, would you have kept acting and never said nothing about this shit? Double facts. That's a good mm, question. A good yeah, question. you know, because uh, it's like this for me personally. You know, because now we was talking about this. I did say, well, I hope he got something else cooking because he's he's pretty much dead in that space. And then well, the reason, t- yeah, go ahead though. What were you about to say? No, I was gonna say. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. The reason why I say that shit is because, hey man, look, I I, I feel bad for a lot of the chicks that's out here. You know, right. that's really going through that kind of shit that, you know, these suck ass niggas is raping these girls. Right. But I'm talking about these chicks like, for instance, what's the chick that played in Black Panther? Lupita. Yeah, Lupita uh, Nyong'o. The, the, the. Okay, now yeah. I was listening to her story with Harvey Weinstein. And she was saying how she met him and she went back to his house. And then when she went to his house, they was watching the movie. He told her to come back in the room. He wanted to talk to her. She said, wait a minute. He said, just come, let me talk to you. They went back to the room. They was talking. He said, I want a massage. Now, she said she agreed to it. But she said in her mind, she was like, well, take off your clothes and I'm going to get on top. She said, the reason why I got on top, because I wanted to be remain in control just in case he did anything. Now, come on, bitch. What motherfucking nigga you going to go back to his house? Mm-hmm. He going to take his shirt off. You going to get on top of him. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he ain't going to think in his mind. You understand what I'm saying? That you ain't finna give him no pussy. Yeah. So then after that happened, oh. she said that she ran into him again at another event in the uh, uh, what they do their movie them uh, the Pan Ams or Can Ams Sundance or something can, yeah. Yeah. Can 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 so, yeah. Yeah. so she said she ran into him again she said when she ran into him again you know he was talking they tried to make it up so she hooked up with him again and then uh, he said he was going to make it right with her and put her in the film so me it more or less sound like okay she might have jacked him off she might not have fucked him she might have sucked him off or whatever he ain't put her in the movie but my whole thing of it is she didn't come out until later on, until after everybody else came on, came out. So my point of it is, like, everybody keeps saying, well, you know, sometimes people can't speak up on it. Well, goddamn, do it take 80 motherfuckers for somebody else? It's like somebody, it's like all of us being horny at the same goddamn time. It's like, you horny? Oh, me horny too. It don't work that way. So my thing with Terry Crews is it make you only look, to me, kind of suspect because she a nigga... 
you got to look at it. You were playing Damon and motherfucking next Friday, jiggling your booty, jiggling your titties, you know, playing like you want to fuck wow. Jim Rock off and Fact all this though. other kind of shit. You understand what I'm saying? Lean on that. So then, Lean on you, that. You, 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 never, you never came out and spoke about this shit before nobody said nothing about no Me Too movement. But then all of a sudden right. when the Me Too movement came out and the women started coming out, a lot of these hoes who lying, then you come out as a man and saying, well, somebody grabbed my balls too. And it really looked like you jumping on the bandwagon to try to get some notoriety because if, if, if the nigga touched your balls or did whatever he did to you way back then, you should have put him on blast then. But you know what, OG? Here's the thing about it, because I told Sin, uh, it's funny you brought that point up, because a little bit earlier, you know, we was looking at some of the other actors. We was going to do something on it, and we were like, ah, fuck it, we moved on. But um, I said this, though, and, I, and you know, I'm just talking about even the, the dudes, because we know what goes on. With the women, but there's a lot of them niggas walking around that they got stories like that, or even worse. They ain't said nothing about it. Yo, well, you I, can't say nothing about it if you let a nigga stick his finger in your ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, can I? Can, Whoa. I want to. I, I do. I do want to say oh one God. thing on that. Y'all about to have me hang up. I Wait, mean, you, OG. You said some wild OG. Shit, baby. I do want to. I do want to say one thing to <laughs> no, that, Frank, though. I don't you know, wait, you got to do a pause after that, my nigga. You got to do a pause. Yeah, you, you, you can't. Pause. You, you can't. You can't. You, you can't come out and be, and be trying to cry. Cry when you a participant in that old fuck shit. You understand what I'm saying? And then you come out and say, well, you know. They, they 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 did this to me. Now, nah, nigga, you let that nigga rub on you, do whatever he did to you, let him tie you, whatever the fuck you gave motherfuckers to do. I'm just kidding. Let me let me chime in one okay, time. Okay, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Me yeah, being mom. out here living in Hollywood for 20 years, I was dating a little chick that was a model chick. You know what I mean? She's like, Yo, come to my world for me. Come to my world for me. Huh? I come to her world for me. <laughs> I'm looking at this whole goddamn movie, man. So I see, you know what I mean? I just see those things out of the ground like dead. I see strips of motherfucking shirt open and shows it too. That's a scene in the fucking movie, bro. So we coming out the motherfucking on sound like, hey, 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 hey. She go with the motherfucking director. They duck off in the cut. You know what I mean? I'm acting like I ain't seen it or whatever. They hugged up, kissing and shit. I'm like, whoa, okay, that's how I go down. She did some wild shit to get that little two-minute roll where she got her shit ripped off and showed her titties in my G. So this is the, the fucking tossing couch is real as shit. And they do it with niggas, too. Kevin Cruz <laughs> was a guy they tried to put in the tossing couch. You did. And I, and I and also want to... I want to bring up but uh, another perspective though, like even with uh, Weinstein, because even though you're right, like some people just have sex or just really want to get it, even without someone pushing them for it. But with the Weinstein thing, I thought something was interesting because when you see Meryl Streep and Oprah, like everybody was referring to Weinstein as God to the point where like they knew he was raping women, but they were Hillary Clinton. Everybody was like, you know, he he's the God right now, so we're not gonna do anything about it. Because with Lapita, she said before she had her first meeting with him, her agent told her, you do not want to cross this man. You better do what he wants because he has a lot of power and you don't want him as an enemy. You need him as a friend. So what do y'all think about the perspective, though, of the, the power structure of the dynamics where people make the wrong decision at the, at the time or are pressured because everybody around them is saying if you don't do something, you're going to either get knocked off or whatever. Well, you know, also real quick, uh, um, and I'm going to go to Yuck Mouth on this, uh, to your point, uh, is that's what we brought up when I was saying about them other guys. Like, I understand Terry Crews. Yeah, he's a big black ass dude. But let's keep it real. There's a lot of dudes, and we're talking about the men, because, you know, since niggas like to be on rah-rah shit, there's a lot of uh, black male celebrities up there that are checked speaking to sin's point just off the power structure alone you know what i'm saying they grabbed your ass or what you said what they do or they grab your nuts a lot of them guys ain't gonna say nothing they just gonna keep it pushing act like it didn't happen but go ahead uh young mouth what you think on that another reason why say cruz hold on hold on i'm listening to y'all at the same time but look another reason why say cruz probably was it because this shit is bisexual this whole Hollywood life is bisexual. All these big celebrity niggas are bisexual. They fucking dudes and bitches. Period. I'm going to tell you that from living out here. 
I ain't gonna say no names, I ain't gonna put nobody on blast, but that's the whole bisexual movement going down. So you Facts. either play or you get executed. And then Facts. you got salute Monique. Monique put that shit on blast. Like at the end of the day, she took, took a half a million, but she like, no, nah, fuck that. When motherfucking whoop whoop getting 10 million and whoop whoop get, man, I'm, I'm gonna be a buck, my nigga. <laughs> I done watched that motherfucking Chappelle shit about twice. That ain't worth no fucking 60 million. I'm gonna give it a buck though. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I can't even say what the fuck is going on. You know what I mean? Like she had a point. And then Dame Dad just came out, checked the boy, you know what I mean? About the two milli at the uh, Diana Ross thingy. You know what I mean? Check the boy. You know what I mean? All on camera. TMZ. You know what I mean? So you really seeing how these dudes operate, dude. This is the industry, the movie industry. It's a casting couch or you fucking out. Period. Niggas and bitches. It's a bisexual game. Yeah. Lee Daniels. Man. Like, let's go. Let's go. Hey. That boy, yay, man. Hey. The creative. You don't see him at the gay parade. You don't see Lee I Daniels see. at the gay parade. <laughs> fruity as a fruity tooth. Look like a gay hey, Sith Lord. Like, hey, hey, hey. I'm a big fan. <laughs> like, let's be real with this shit, bro. Let's be <laughs> one bow <laughs> wow with this shit. It's a gay parade industry, bro. Yeet, yeet. I saw this little motherfucking uh... gay parade. And uh, they got to yeah. go with that. You know what I mean? If they don't go with it, they get cut out. So when the boy got grabbed by his boys, I would have kicked the nigga right in his door. <laughs> I ain't get it. I got a wife. Nigga, you see my bro right here? I ain't there, nigga. Keep it moving. That's because at that point, if, yeah, if, if, if he got the gall to grab your balls, you already in a tight spot anyway. Mm. So you might as well go and mash on that nigga. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, once, time, once you, you got the right to mash on him. He's now ready to go. Thanks. But you he know, he came what? within three feet of you. Nigga, nigga, can't come within three feet. Nigga, whoa, you're too close. First of all, nigga, I got my wife, nigga, so that adds an extra three feet. Nigga, so six feet. You can't come <laughs> that close to me and my wife. Like, what are you doing? I'm gonna fuck and then what you, you got to Yeah, then you got to ask yourself when it did yeah. happen. Because cause, cause then the nigga Terry Crews did say he was addicted to porn. What kind of porn was you watching? Would you watch it? Hey, yo, stop it. The boy grabbed a nigga balls. The nigga got muscular wife that he work out with. Let's not, let's not go there, brother. He put that shit out there. I'm out here. This shit is gay. He put it out there. He, you know, he though. Do that. He had to end his career like that. Nigga, something happened. Flat no, out. No, no. Like, yeah, yeah, what I'm saying is something did happen, but what I'm saying is it's just like, <laughs> what type of shit was something he doing? Did shit? Happen. Yeah, something did happen. You know, you want to tap out. <laughs> what, with the Simpsons and also Family Guy, though, it shows you how much all this is an open secret because, you know, the Family Guy, the creator, he he knows about what goes on in the industry. He made an episode one time where a little boy was running from Kevin Spacey. And that was like years before uh, no. Kevin Spacey got caught. Uh, you look at the Simpsons no. that talked about Trump, you know, becoming president and then going back to Family Guy. They said some wild shit that I was like, whoa, when they said <laughs> Brett ratner was basically going to like these uh there's events where they're like selling off children and women and men like these sex trafficking thing and they real. would they would bid on who they want yeah that like shit is real shit this shit like is that. real because hold on, it's hold, on, like, hold on please please let me let me tap in on this one all right go ahead young man you got forget. it you got it go on man we you got can't it forget when south park dismembered everybody in kanye west was trying to quit Period. When South Park did the fucking fish stick, it looked like Kanye West was rolling with gay niggas. He instantly imported Amber Rose, the stripper. Ooh, you know what I mean? Go to like, Young Valve. Uh oh. You, know know I mean? you said South all of a sudden. Park. South Park, nigga, the motherfucking <laughs> shit on Comedy Central made that. this nigga that. get. That was a creation of Amber Rose. This nigga was rolling with a crew. <laughs> he fish sticks, oh, bro. Yeah. And I'm going to end it on that. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. You know what? Because I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, man. And it's like some of the shit that coming about, like some of these celebrities, especially these black ones. It's like I heard rumors all of my life growing up about I ain't going to say no names like that because we got some respectable figures on the line. You know what I'm saying? But I will say it is some of the shit that spilled out. I'm like, I, well, we I already heard that type of shit floating around before. And uh, going back to what OG was saying. 
even when I think about Terry Crews, like it, it's a fucked up situation because either way he's fucked. So whatever yeah. the case is. But my thing yeah. is this though. What was the atmosphere off camera that allowed for somebody to just comfortably walk up <laughs> and, and, and say, I want Ooh, to put your right. hand, I want to put my hands on your stuff. Because it's like, you ain't walking up to OG with that Ooh. shit. You're not going to walk up to Yuck Mouth. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's you like. definitely ain't walking up to Yuck with yeah, the bullshit. But bro. yeah, so my point Yo, is this. Is, look, 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 look. Yeah, go ahead. Let me, let, me tell you, let me tell you a story about my neighborhood. I mean, I got five of them, right? All right, yeah. My neighborhood, the Ville, man. Those things can come spend five dollars a year. We'll, we'll give it to you. Hey, you spend a five. Hey, here you go. Five got stabbed a couple times. Don't never come through here with five. So at the end, they're gonna reel you in and fuck you up. You know well, what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Like the industry shit. You know? But yeah. that's the point about it, though. I just wanted to say this real quick to finish my point off. Is what were you also are you participating in anything that they like yo we just think you cool and was that just not the day to grab your nuts I, I you know what i'm saying like what yeah. was it that the atmosphere that was created that allowed for that man to walk up to you at a party why your wife is there i think you that know what I'm for me the atmosphere is quite simple because like even if let's say hypothetically we give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's not engaging in those parties it's like dude you're in a movie expendable where you got stallone who has called black people niggers. You got Mel Gibson in the movie, called black people niggers. These people who are caught on- Hulk audio. Hogan coming, right? We Hulk Hogan on the another- the, the, Hey there, brother. Hulk Hogan. Hey there, brother. Hulk Hogan <laughs> is in the film. How many niggers are around me, brother? Call black people niggers. It's like, even if he's not engaged in that behavior, you're in movies surrounded by white men who have tried to emasculate black men just on the level of- of calling them niggers on, 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 But you on know what? Camera. There's another power dynamic, too, because uh, to OG's point and what Yuck was illustrating a little bit earlier, it is about the power you acquire, right? Because let's be real. They ain't going to rock up. They're not going to walk up to the rock and grab his nuts because not only how big he is, yeah. but, but also he's a money maker right now. They ain't walking up to Denzel Washington. Denzel's smaller than Terry Crews, but Denzel has a different type of power about him. You know, and let's be real. They kind of looked at Terry Crews like... Like a goofball. He ain't had no power. I'm going to grab his nuts. Uh oh, <laughs> they looked at Terry, Terry Crews like he was a fairy. Because all the roles he played was, played was fairy roles. Yeah. He and the, the, the yeah. white girls, he, he got the motherfucking... Uh, Glow stick, she dances, sleep and shit like all of those girl roles. He, he on motherfucking uh, airplane or uh, whatever that thing was with Kevin Hardy or doing the little gay shit like all of those were gay roles. Like why wouldn't a motherfucking executive come at you like, hey, you grabby grab? Because you say gay roles with two heels like, come on. Yeah. They ain't never came to Ice Cube, grab his nuts. They ain't never like you said, never came to Denzel, grab his nuts. Yeah. Never told that more chestnuts. Grab this nut. And his name is Nut. Grab this nuts. Like, you gotta look at the real motherfuckers that's out here. You know what I mean? The motherfucker that played Luke Cage. He go to my gym. They ain't never grabbed this nuts. He's in the gym working out. He gonna punch the shit out of somebody. So at the end of the day, man, they gonna test who they think is with the shit. More of the story. Yeah, man, it is. It, you know, whatever picture you painted yourself, nigga, that's how they gonna come at you. And, and exactly. she, the, the, the only way I look at it, it's like, okay, the nigga say he hid porn from his wife for a very long time, and he was addicted to that shit. See, a lot of times, niggas be having two different faces. She Hold up, nigga. Like, I look at Pornhub, too, nigga. Hold up. <laughs> cut it out, bro. Hey, we all hey, look hey, at hey, Pornhub, hey, bro. Hey, look, <laughs> cut it out, hey, bro. Don't, hey, don't, hey, don't, don't make it look hey, like hey, the enemy. <laughs> hey, but, I, but, but here's the thing, though. Watch it. I watch oh. Pornhub, too. But a nigga ain't addicted to that, though. But Hell yeah, I'm a, I jack being, off yeah. every day. Cut it out, man. I jack yeah. off every day. Yeah, yeah. It's you all do good. too. I ain't jacking off you every, do not too. every day, blood. <laughs> nah, I ain't yeah, moving like say, that. You, <laughs> but go you, ahead, OG. Every time you get you, every time you get a chance to no, no, no Frank Ocean. But let's be real, man. Real niggas. Let's be real. But go ahead, OG. Go ahead, OG. Like OG you was if, talking if, about. If you I feel said, like I gotta beat every day. Yeah. I'm going to go get up on some pussy, my nigga. I ain't going to jack <laughs> No, up. nigga, I get pussy and beat. I get pussy and beat. Let me give you the clue yeah. to this shit, bro, because because you got a couple on the phone. 
And my nigga could approve of this. You jack off, get that off, and you could go fuck a girl all night, nigga, without fucking a <laughs> nut. Make it last longer, bro. Oh, you got to know the game, my nigga. Like, yeah, I ain't yeah. talking to pervert yeah. shit. I'm married, my nigga. Yo, I get a prenup, and I go ham on my wife. All right, yo, but yeah. hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that, but yeah. that nigga might not have been doing that. Though. Right, yeah. right. He, oh, he oh definitely. That way. definitely. Yeah. OG, you saying he, there he, might he, be some other shit going on? Like he might, he might be doing something that man, he may be ashamed look, man, of. Look, yeah. it's like with anything. I'm from the south side of Chicago. Before I moved to Houston, my family still there. Right. My father, like I said, man, we came around real niggas. My my people always been old heads. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you could almost look at a nigga, man. That's just me personally. He seemed like you're a cool nigga, but he seemed like one of the type of niggas that'll do anything to get in. Mm -hmm. If you look at the roles that he was playing, right. if you look at how he was moving, that's just me. So if you present yourself that way, a nigga is only going to try you by the way that you present yourself. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, if the nigga was doing other secretive shit that his wife didn't know about when he going on these auditions, when he sliding up in these parties, she can't be everywhere with him. And who's to say what he was doing when when he, when she wasn't around and he was going to yeah, these places? She wasn't around. You feel me? When he was yeah. participating and, and might have been, you know, sometimes, man, niggas will be like, oh, okay, well, you can do this and you can do that. And then when the nigga get around, it's like, well, you know, you can't do that because my wife here. Motherfucker, walk up to you and grab your ball. Yeah. Like, Wait a minute. We just did this shit last week. <laughs> Don't do that. My wife is here. My wife's in the room. I, I, you know, it's like, it's just crazy, though, because I was just still looking at the dynamics, you know, whatever it swings of either he was in the parties, because his, his, his roles are stupid. It's like you already made yourself look a certain way, even if you're not that. But I was just looking at Adam's connect, and I'm like, I see why you're getting white ball. I mean, his close friend is Stallone, Adam Sandler, you know, people that uh, Terry Crews was working with up until... You know the Vanette thing. Yeah, man. So it's like you he's, got he's, Stallone, man. That's enough. You, uh, Stallone looked like a whole stroke in the face. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. You know, come on, bro. <laughs> Stallone, man. Like, come on, like you know. I, yo, and then look, and then look. We got we got deal. We got deal with bro. We got deal with bro and Creed too. After yeah. the success of Black Panther, mm -hmm. we got to fuck with bro and Creed too, and we gonna watch it because of the success. You know what I mean? The black pants, the guy. But you know, even with that, like St wow. Stallone is racist as fuck, though, because he said like Ryan Coogler for the first one. He's the director, not Stallone. Like he's the director. They said that Stallone, hey. they saw him, uh, him and Michael B. Jordan just chilling one time, talking to each other. Stallone came up to them and like, why you're not working? Hey, why you're not working? So he said, Ryan said. So from then on out, they made sure they were you know looking busy. I mean, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? That's the that industry, though. That's that industry. I'm the director, not you. You an actor. Hey. Long face, wrinkle face, <laughs> eighty year old ass. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, I directed nigga, Rocky. You know, Hey, 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 hey. Are y'all working? Are y'all working? That nigga, that nigga got a retirement home face and an 18 year old body. Hey, are y'all working? Can you imagine him coming up to you, slobbing on himself? Can you imagine Stallone walking up to you, slobbing on himself? Are you working? What's going on here? Like, come on, man. But that's just like how it is. And so when I looked at Terry Crews I, and, I, and, and to OG and Yuck Mouse Point, y'all both hit the nail on the head. It's like, bro, like when I looked at him, I was like, you didn't necessarily play the most powerful and commanding roles. So I can't see them not necessarily trying. I, I've seen them sun him in interviews when he would be interviewed by a Hollywood reporter because it's, it's like you said, whatever you're putting out there, that's how well, people kind of sometimes I, 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 in, yeah. in, in, in this did particular you hear what the space. White lady ex, ex, did you hear what the white lady ex Terry Crews at that? the disposition? She said, well, you're a big black guy. Why you just didn't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what I say that I'm taking a charge Yo, in front of my wife? But you gonna get dumped on your I, noggin, hey. my nigga? Are you serious, <laughs> nigga? You got the game <laughs> fucked up, nigga. I ain't, I, hey. He got little. He let a nigga grab on his shit and got little, man. You can't get little after a nigga do that, man. You better make yeah, him. But, 
the way like the white lady had to be able to float. She said, You're 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 a rapidly, you know, massive big guy. Why you just didn't in her hand she did a push, man, that shit was funny to the motherfucker, man. I, I do wanna put out there though she for said like he could have pushed him away. She said he could have pushed him that one stood. We could have gave him a high thing. It wouldn't have happened. I, I do wanna say this though, as yeah, like we're not I'm making excuses dumb. for Renee. You know, we're not making excuses for everyone's listening. We're not making excuses for Renee or Harvey Weinstein or all that. We don't, I don't, I don't, however somebody is or their image is retarded or whatever the case they may be doing, no one has the right to just come up and do anything to you. But we're speaking on reality of the situation for Terry Crews and then how certain things look. Well, no, it's like this, man. It's like real talk. Like, here's the thing about it, though. You know, at the end of the day, um, the only thing I'll say in this is, you know, which I, that's why I'm, I'm weird on this because it's like, even if you want to go with the angle 100% with, you know, Terry Crews behind the scenes, right? And I get it. But then it's like, if we're going to do that, then we also got to speak on the pedophilia shit too with these young boys. Because if we want to talk about like he, when he's like toxic masculinity, then we got to address like when young boys do get touched and how they get ridiculed because like they be like, nah, nigga, you just got some pussy or they'll tell you to shut the fuck up, right? Or you're not being a man or most dudes think that if they, something happened to them when they're younger, that they're not a man for confessing it, come forward. Like but, that Antoine Fisher yeah, film. Yeah, but then yeah. I know, but then it's like even Terry Crews understands the dynamics of the power structure because even in his Me Too male version of it he goes only so far because they ain't gonna touch that pedophilia shit which is really what the real rundown is in hollywood and especially if you're talking about these little young boys that you got billionaires flying out of we saw with jerry sandusky with yeah. sandusky's as they knew he was in there uh, uh some of the people was like i heard slapping and shower they found out like he was fucking little black boy so it's like even when i look at all of this shit like you only want you only want justice up to certain uh, a certain point before you start fucking with that real power structure. Because you already going to get blackballed, but then you start saying shit like that, that's when you get X'd off. Them little boys and little girls. Like, that's the thing, too. And, like, you know, even when you're talking about those type of pedophiles and stuff, for them, it's, there's, it's always an excuse for them. It's like, oh, I saw a five-year-old girl in a bikini. It's like, so? You know, it's like for people who are predators, every fucking thing is, is seen as sexual to them. Yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's just like, you know, the Terry Crews situation, you know, and... and uh, Unfortunate. To, yeah, to OG's point. It is still, it's, uh, it's fucked up at the end of the day, but the whole thing is, is he dead in that space. So I'm just saying where he gonna, you know... He's he should have... I agree with OG, you, and Yuck when you're saying no matter the, what the thing is behind the scenes, you was gonna get blackballed anyway, yeah. so you should have just decked him. Yeah, I mean, you know, at least they people, like, at least they'll say, you know how it is, Yuck Mouth. Like, you know when niggas get in an OG. At least they'll say there's, they, for somebody, if there's death either way, death with respect is more honorable. You know what I mean? Well, your manhood is it's like It's like this, man. If you punch me, you can't be mad if I shoot you, my nigga. Seriously, <laughs> it's no motherfucker. I thought saying, you was going to say you punch. Can't. You said shoot. <laughs> You, you can't be mad, man. All this fear and war, man. You can't grab on my nuts in front of my wife, man. I'm gonna slide you on your motherfucking wallet in front of everybody. You gonna slide on your wallet to the swimming pool, my nigga, and I'm gonna dive in the swimming pool and drown you. Look at that shit, like, oh man, yeah, I I'm disrespecting a nigga manhood. No matter how many sissy roles I play, and I'm a buff ass football player. Nigga, I'll knock you to over the fence, nigga. Like, he should have, like, come on. He should have held his ground and did his shield night. Yeah. Make yourself feared. But they still had to handle business with him. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you, you got to do that, my nigga. Like, yo, it wouldn't be no rap a lot if it wasn't no fear. Create. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be no death row if it wasn't no fear. Created. But everybody still had to handle business. You got to think about it because right. Nat Turner wouldn't have just said, fuck it, I'm going to stand up and fight. Shit, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah, man. It's, it, it is true, man, because, OG, you bring up a great point. It's like, um, you know, I thought about the Terry you know, Cole situation. You can't, be, you can't be scared. You nah. feel me? I mean, at the you end gotta of the day. You got to stand up, shit. my nigga, no matter, man. Win, lose, or draw, like I said, in the playground. Right. If a nigga bullying you, win, lose, or draw, he going to have most. That's for you, period. That nigga could be like, yo, you beat my ass that night. I was out of pocket. Oh, yeah. You know what no, I mean? Yeah, they could have right. that personal right. phone call. Yeah, you're right about you that. You know what I mean? Nah, like, nah, yeah. you ain't lying. You like, ain't lying. They I go mean, down like that after the ass I mean, <laughs> let's, let's think about it. Obviously, Dame Dash wasn't concerned about it because he slapped the fuck out of Harvey Weinstein about on Peyton Fool's set. 
That well, shit funny. Uh-huh. And want, then we just seen what he did to Lee Daniels. So come on, man. It's I want to ask you guys this. How do you toe the line with like addressing like people who are predators, but also addressing those who you feel like you could have made a better decision without making it seem like you're co-signing the predator? Answer that question. One more. Answer that question again. Ask that question again. How do you address like a person that could have made a, a better decision without making it come off as as, as if like you're you're giving the predator a oh, pass? Yeah. Like how do you toe the line of being say being able to say, well, okay, this person's a piece of shit, but you know, just as constructive criticism, I felt you could have did this better. Well, see, that's going to be a very difficult thing to do because. Most of the time, you only make the decision according to what your options are at that time, mm-hmm. off of your reaction. Double facts. So, just think about it. If you and 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 homie out and y'all walking and you holding hands and some guy walk up to y'all and he talking and all of a sudden he just put his hand between your dude legs, then what's your natural reaction gonna be? You gonna try to take that motherfucker head off? Your 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 thought process is not gonna be like, okay, well let me rationalize this. I'm gonna take him to court for touching my balls. <laughs> that's not gonna be your natural reaction. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that's just like if some girl walked up to you that you didn't know. And she walked up to you and she slid her hand between your legs or she stuck a tongue in your mouth or even some dude walked up to you that you didn't know. So you're not going to be like, okay, well, I'm going to take you to court and sue you. No, if a nigga touch you like that, your automatic response is, I'm going to take your motherfucking head off. Yeah. So that's a very difficult thing uh, to ask somebody to do at that time. And maybe his wife, that's what, that's what would make you have to question, well, that's just kind of odd to think that a nigga that big would just let a nigga walk up to him and massage his nuts or whatever the fuck he did to him. And then he go, baby, he was rubbing on my penis. Can you believe that? Mm-hmm. And then his wife tells him, come on, baby, let's go. That That's just, to me, that just don't <clears throat> even sound like no manly response that a man would even take. I don't care how Christian you are. Right. Uh, how saved you are, whatever the case may be. Your natural reaction, if you grab my dick and I'm not gay, I'm knocking your fucking teeth out. But you know what, OG? Uh, my thing is this, is like, I, I do find certain things interesting. It's like, you, you don't even say what was your dialogue right after he did that, right? Because, you know, you didn't say, hey, man, you know, don't do that. Like, you don't say, well, at the very least, I told him what was your fucking problem or don't fucking touch me. We don't get any of that. It's just more like, oh, I went to my wife, honey, this, that, and the third. But it does say something to me personally, like when I do look at a guy like Terry Crews, and, and not even just factoring in size, but just energetically as a man, uh, the fact that the fact that comfortably, there's, it's, there's this weird energy that there was just nothing there. And it just made me wonder, what was it, um, how are you trained because I get why, like, you get a reaction like yuck mouth, right? And then on the other end of the spectrum, OG, your energy is similar to yuck mouth. Is you just coming from a different angle? But you, you say at the very least, I'm going to get, I'm going to address it right then and there. To not address no, it then and there, and then you, go to your wife, and then it's kind of like that's the thing that I'm more interested in as as far as Terry Crews and it has that been a factor in well, his look, career? Look, 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 look. Look, 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 look. Look, why the wife and him? She's buff. She's in the gym. She's him in muscular gym. Yuck mouth. I can't hear you. Yuck mouth. Yo, yuck mouth. Yuck mouth, man. You, uh, it's like, I don't know if something going on. You Hold on speak. for one second, yeah. guys. Yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, hold on. You can't hear me? I'm yeah. on. I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on, y'all. I'm back on? Nah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. That's OG. You can't hear me? Yeah, not yet. All right. All right. You can yep. hear me, bro? Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, we can hear you now, man. Yeah, it was, it was sounding muffled. Okay, muffin. check this out, man. Why the wife didn't fuck him up? She's buff as shit. She like the Seahawk. Why she didn't fuck with her? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey. You know what I mean? That's, that's the first one. Don't grab her my, my husband. Hey, now, if a girl did that, she would have fucked the girl up, right? Yeah. I'm just saying. So. But but it have- well, gotta be an agreement. It, it has to be an agreement. And then when this shit come out, all of a sudden, man, hey, you don't get too much. Say that when it happens, and that's my little curiosity. Like, 
soon as that shit happened, that shit should have came out before the Me Too move. But, awesome. but you know how I feel about it, though? Because, okay, we're looking at these guys, and some of the guys that are even connected to Adam are predators themselves. So to me, it's like, you know, if, you, if you're if you around certain people and all your friends are like that, then that means more than likely you're like that, too. Not one of your friends, because everybody can have, like, one fucked up friend. But if everybody's like that around you, then it's questionable even, let's say, Terry Crews being silent on other people's uh, possible assaults as well. But... Like with me, it's like when when you go into psychology, there is truth that some people freeze though. Like not everybody first <clears throat> reaction is to fight. They it's three reactions: you freeze, you you run away, or you fight. You know. And I'm wondering if we just skipping over the fact that this could have been a freeze for him. Maybe his first thing was confusion. No, you it's know, because I remember not. with me, like the first time somebody came at me a certain way, they didn't touch me. But when they said something to me, I'm, I was rushing, I'm like, I still did something, but it took me, like, 20 seconds, like, processing, like, what, did this motherfucker just say that to me? But, you know, my thing is this, is that, it's like, I, that part I always factor in, the freezing part, it's just, I just feel like there's some things about this story overall, it's just something's weird, it's this piece is missing that's just not fitting together for me. Um, and I just leave it is what it is. All I will say is, is in that space, he is, his career is dead. It's dead, dead and, and gone. You know, so that's why I said where he's going to go from this is going to be interesting. Uh, is he going to be more graceful than Monique was? Because Monique was trying to expose niggas in that space, but trying to stay yeah. in that space at the same time. They disrespect the Monique, And though. we was like, bro, it don't work like that. It's either you're going to expose niggas, you're going to check out, or you're going to take your death with honor. But you can't expose niggas and still stay in the same space because they're going to try to slide you out the way. So that's one thing about it. But yo, young mouth, man, bro. Hey, man, we appreciate you calling in, yes, man. We're we going to be wrapping up the stream, <laughs> homie. Um, hey, hey, last hey, words? Man, we good, man. Hey. Thanks, y'all, oh, man. No, fucking thought crimes, man. I've been lit, been drinking, smoking, and shit. Fuck it with you. I've been like bobbling, mumble rapping, you know, but I've been landing some real shit, though. At the end of the day, bro, it's about the industry, bro. Like I told y'all, this shit is bisexual around here. Hollywood, bro. Every time we've been a part of that shit. Uh -huh. And he cried, he finally said, hey, stop it. Because, like I said, why would a motherfucker approach you like that if you wasn't down like that? Right. I'll be at all these parties. Nobody ain't never grabbed my balls and massage me or, you know, none of that shit. So uh -huh. you got to be in the circle to even be approached like that. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that, that's my outlook on this whole shit, man. I'm out here. They'll yeah. approach these real niggas like Nipsey Hussle from the Rolling Sixties, right. YG, the blood nigga. Uh -huh. They don't put, like the little industry, little movie niggas. You got to go through fire hoops. It's like a circus. You got to jump through fire hoops to make it. Mm -hmm. That's where you get involved with that stupid shit. So I don't doubt if, you know, allegedly, mm -hmm. I don't doubt if, he was part of the real shit in the motherfuckers, you know what I mean? Like, look, we had me. We've been down tonight, <laughs> you know what I mean? With your wife, because that's how they do it. They do your wife, you ass, man. I've been to party. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, this fucking party. Double Where fast. it got the strip club at the bottom, and it got room for motherfuckers is doing, you know, the, the uh, swinger thing. The mask is on. This is in Hollywood. Man. This is mm. out here. This is on the one of these motherfuckers tonight. You did? So it's that type of world out here where motherfuckers got masks on. They fucking each other. They watch each other fucking each other. It's whack. I stuck at the motherfucking strip club and was drinking. Man. I'm not going upstairs. Mm. It's fucking a whole other culture. You mm. did? But this is the party they have. This is the after hours they have out here. Oh, if you in the real movie industry, you got roles and shit, you playing these little girly roles, I can imagine what you did to get that girly role. Mm. I'm going to end it on that, my nigga. It's oh, a little mild, you, know, you, said some, you said some real key, man, and I just like what you said. You said, you said, I'm not going upstairs. You said, it's a different culture. I'm going to slide out. 
that that's profound what you said, and man. Very important because yeah. remember how Howard Stern son Jamie Foxx he said, "Yeah, you better not make no jokes about me, Jamie, because I know what All you do." All your secrets, yeah. Yeah, he's like, I think the Fox hole is very interesting. Yeah. How you cool. named it, like, yo, oh, it be yeah. you know what be making me mad though, like about people like Jamie Foxx and them, they be so talented. But they put their face under these people's boots, and now they son for life. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. But I like what Young Mouse said. He said, you be at these parties. He said, I've been to them. He said, I'm not going upstairs. It's a different culture. Fuck that. You know, that's why I <laughs> fucks with your live streams, man. Young, you be having me. Every time I hear your laugh, yeah, yeah, I be like, that should be making me laugh. But I will ask you one other question, man, before you tap out of here. Your predictions for Drake in this double disc album, do you think he's going to address people directly? you think he's just going to kind of go back to business as usual? you think he got some shit to get off his chest? All the above. Mm. Drake about to smack. Me being affiliated with Rap a lot and my little tap-ins with them brothers, everybody told me, like, Drake about to smack me. Mm. So that's what you hearing in the yeah. industry? You hearing that officially that he about to... He I'm about... hearing that from rap a lot. I'm hearing that from the, the camp. The source. <laughs> you know, I'm rap a lot record. All right. I'm hearing that from the camp. Drake mm. about to slide niggas on their wallet. <laughs> it up. Because at the end of the day, man, I ain't gonna do that. Get the album, man. Get, get Drake new shit, man. <laughs> Damn, young mouth man. I, I, I ain't gonna do we, all that. we appreciate Thank you calling, call in, young mouth man. That full moon must be active like Cali for you to call in, man. Lord, we appreciate you. Bless you, peace. All right, hey man, I tried to call in like five days ago. What? I'm gonna end it on this one, man. This just uh, one last one, man. All right. The what? one I tried to call in on where y'all was talking about rappers are broke. Uh, Everybody broke, bro. Yeah. Football players, basketball players, <laughs> actors. Look at, look at the nigga. Look at Johnny it. Depp. Everybody broke, man. Yeah. You like a rap game is broke. Like, you can't do us like that, but you can't slide us on a wall like that. I love y'all, but y'all killed me on that one, bro. Like, god damn. Hey. You can't, you can't. Look, 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 look. Let, me, let me give you a prime example. All right. It's a re. it's a retro era right now. So, all the Big Daddy Kings, all the Slick Ricks. Run DMC, everybody doing concert shoes, big ass arenas. This is going down. Mm -hmm. So niggas is making a shitload of money. Yeah, like yo, rappers are broke. Old niggas are woo. This nigga, you got to picture the game. Game giving a shitload of money. Mm -hmm. He's out here, dude. He got the new, he got the new Bentley truck. He got the Bentley. But the game out here tearing up. Mm -hmm. I don't know what y'all heard. <laughs> game in LA tearing the fuck up. Mm -hmm. Period, man. So at the end of the day, man, we all gotta just like look at the whole prospect of everything. Mm -hmm. Like a football player exit out of the game after lose two, three, four years, he's out of here. We don't know what he's doing. A actor or actress exit out of the game two, four years. Like, we don't know what they do. Same on so on so on. So when the rapper do that, like yo, your rap industry broke. He the hottest niggas in the game. Rap is the number one motherfucking genre in the industry over rock and roll, country, all that shit. So we niggas, these new niggas is making millions at the snap of a finger. It never was like that back in the 90s. So it's a whole new animal right now. So we can't say that. You know what I mean? We can say, hey, the rap niggas are both. It's a whole new game right now from streaming, live, views, this, that, and third followers. It's a whole new shit mm -hmm. that niggas didn't have. Tupac didn't have that. Biggie didn't have that. You know what I mean? So niggas got to really tap in and be like, yo, man, let's even the game out. Everybody go broke at one time or other. Well, you know also, I mean? niggas got to stop. Real talk. Uh, yeah, I feel you, Young Mouth. So here's the thing, man. Anytime you want to call in, anytime you disagree, you be like, man, what these little niggas tripping on? I'm calling in. Fuck that. Or if you just want to jump no, in the I conversation. I tried to call in that night. But, I yeah. tried to fuck with y'all that night. But yeah. anyway, it's all good, man. But, we yeah. all go broke. Yeah, but here's the thing you about it, bro. It is I got what you. It is. But life we... is a roller coaster. Yeah. You go up and down. You win some, you lose some. You get money, you go broke. You get money. Life is a roller coaster. Nobody stay on top. All the time, my nigga. No, nah. we didn't sing that from your favorite artists. Yeah, no, that about that. No, nah, you right about With that, the man. Kanye. That right. roller coaster's at the bottom of the hill right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. Look at oh, well, we could go with the uh, what's my nigga? Eighteen forty eight. What's bro? Eighteen. What's bro name? From Which? New Jersey. Oh, oh, button. Joe button. 
No, not Button. 1438, the nigga that was doing the Hennessy shit. Oh. What's my nigga name? I can't remember right The one now. with the one eye? Fetty Wap? Fetty Wap, there you go. Fetty Wap. Where's Fetty Wap at? You know what I mean? It, it comes and it goes, but nigga, like, come on, man. We got to, you know what I mean? Niggas, hey, gotta, man, you know what, Yuck Mouth? Anytime, anytime you want to call in, bro, that's why I was just about to say, man, if you agree, disagree, if you just want to jump in, man, we got you, we got you plugged in. So yeah. when your when your it's number up, fall through, up. When you show up. Over there. Yeah, we I'm tapped in. When you see this eight one eight number, answer, bro. I've been calling for about an hour all night, bro. Tap me in, man. I fucking stop crimes, man. Flat out, smoke a lot radio coming on Dash Radio, man. We fuck with y'all. We do the podcast shit. You did. All right, man. I fuck with y'all. Salute y'all. And then I'm I'm gonna tell you the best thing about a group or anything you're doing. It's the chemistry. Y'all are couple. You know what I mean? So the chemistry is immaculate. Y'all can send me see each other's sentences. You know what I mean? So that's the best thing about y'all. I fuck with y'all a long way. I'm out this motherfucker. Yuck mouth. You know what I mean? Loonies. Rap a lot. Yada that boy <laughs> All right, Playboy, man. We appreciate the love so much, man. That's what's up, bro. See, well, we, we got to get that system in order, man. We don't know who, who the fuck else been trying to call, too. You know what I'm saying? You know, he he said, man, I've been trying to call in for a moment, man. So, shouts out to... Can we give them both OG and Young Mouth a round of applause? Shouts out to OG. OG, man, bro, if you're listening, always when you get a chance, you can call in, man. Uh, I wanna, we want to do some stuff with you as well. And, yo, shout out to Young Mouth, see you know, shit. He said he's been trying to get in, and our, our silly ass has just been talking. We, don't, mm -hmm. we ain't been paying attention to shit. That's why we gotta get through the phone calls better. We fucking ignorant as hell, y'all. Because I ain't know what that was. It was random as fuck, but shouts out to Yug Mouth, man. <laughs> he brought some great points in this game, and you heard what he said. Um, and he, if you don't, here's the thing if you don't know your hip hop history, do your research on Yug Mouth. He is, he is thorough on the point about Jay Prince. He would know. He says, from what I'm hearing in the camp, of that whole camp over there he said drake they, he's sitting on several things you know how people say they sitting on some he's sitting on several of them things so uh yeah, it's what we've been saying but yeah man anytime any some of y'all folks who quietly listen any of you industry cat all right man y'all can call in we ain't gonna really bite y'all head off or nothing like that just a casual conversation folks and also uh make sure you check out respect mentality it's all about mentality mentality get my book respect and it's all about mentality i will say this once again when hogs become giraffes and giraffes become starfish mentality we talking about a money making biracial immigrant mentality we talking about an obese face producer stanky booty boy mentality we talking about a 41 year old kindergarten braid hair wearing dope dealer blipster mentality we talking about lebron james cleveland cavaliers getting swept in game four mentality we talking about an adulterous husband with peasley hair open chest used cadillac car salesman suit wearing mentality we talking about a Beyonce oily booty cheeks with her hobo oil and tea tree oil getting slammed on at the game for mentality. Ah, uh, it's all about mentality. Buy my book, author, creator, publisher, book signing, book opening, possibly see span interviewing mentality. The book is called Respect, and I need for you to go into your pockets and participate in the venture corporate capitalistic society to push my book to the New York Times bestseller mentality. I need you to understand that it's all about mentality. All right. Yo, uh, also, real quick, man, we're going to give a shout-out to uh, 
Let's go ahead and hear. Damn, I got the damn Centigas on the wrong side, girl. I didn't know. Ooh, man, look at y'all. Brandon War, Arusha, shouts out to. She said, what's his trigger? S. Wilson, Daryl, man. Shouts out to Daryl, man, Dow, man. Shouts out to your Looney Tunes back up in the motherfucking building. We ain't seen your forehead in a minute, girl. Uh, Dexter Masters Dexterity. We got Ty Young Thug, Young Bell as well. He says, salute the homie Yuck Mouth and salute to Thought Crimes for supporting my music on their channel. Peace and love. And we also got Brandon Ruggs and Cheetah Baby. So we all gonna give y'all all a Pimp C shout out, man, right real quick. Support there you us. go. Support man, we appreciate support. you so much. Of course, this is your man, Savage Solomon, along here with... Sincere Ignorance. Take care. Peace, y'all. I didn't hustle all you bitches when I came out talking about how much I love you women. Love you, love you. I'm talking black girl magic. Black pussy. And I'm staying in that pocketbook. College girl. Every time they wanna stop and lock. Love you, girl. I be fucking all these black girls. Uh huh. And I have my baby by a white girl. You know why? Cause she's a trophy. A fucking trophy. Fucking trophy, y'all. Fucking trophy. What? What? Fucking trophy. Uh. I done pimped up all these black women. Uh. Uh. They done wrote me about the root. Uh. Now they saying I'm a feminist. Tasha. This is why I stay up in this shit Nicole Cause I am a fucking pimp Renee Light skinned nigga from Canada uh. And you know I don't give a fuck uh. And you know what time it is now Yeah I can't even really sing now Uh huh Hey Ever since I was younger I was in love with Rihanna Jennifer Lopez Jada Pinkett Smith Shit Nicki Minaj Ha 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 Ah uh, I told Meek Mill don't you drop the soap Damn son uh, where'd you find this? I got this? this game on the road Uh I get straight A's ho Woo. They said call me on a roll Uh <laughs> Drake, you motherfucking pimp, you. He with a white girl, y'all still sucking for you him. You motherfucking pimp. Oh, cause he got them black women in them videos, Let's man. Let's give it up to the nigga. Oh my god. The pimp of the year. What business are you in? Oh, uh, I make my bread and butter. I'm pushing. What business are you in? Oh, uh, I make my bread and butter. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I'm pushing. What business are you in? Oh, uh, I make my bread and butter.